Why for those of us that can speak, you can just indicate by raising up of hand why you are unmuted, then you just tell us your name and your location. Uh, this is Jamie Ubalogon. I resided in Nigeria. I located in Nigeria, I mean. And I'm happy to be part of this program because I believe how, uh, how impacted it will be because I believe many people, especially in Nigeria, the climate change have been affecting many society and we are, uh, they are not exposing to it, but I believe with the operation of this uh, initiative, it will, uh, everything will be resolved. Okay. So, Balog, um, Balog, where are you shouting? Where, where is your current location? You know, it's Nigeria. Where exactly in Nigeria? What state? Nigeria, Kwara State. Okay, Kwara State. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay, Yahaya Abbas. Yeah, yeah, Bas, please can you? Yeah, yeah, Bas, please go on. Maybe if uh, Yaya yeah, can't hear, we can try with someone okay. else. So who who else can speak? Okay, so um, this is Aka. Okay. Okay. Go on. Um, from KB. In KB State, Nigeria, currently. Okay. okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can yes. you hear me? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, so yes. this Ata Ikeri. Okay, so this Ata Ikeri from currently in KB State in Nigeria and um, Western of Nigeria. I'm so glad to be among um, these. Um, platform this um, group today to um, to join in this group today. I'm actually a geography teacher. I studied geography in school. So when we talk about climate change, it's my area, it's my field. I've got so much knowledge about it and I would love to exercise what I've been taught in class, okay, from my undergraduate level to exercise it in practical level into this platform. Thank you very much. Thank you. So who is next? Who can speak? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm Antonio Luashegunpo. Um, okay. I'm residing in Ibadan, Oyo State. I'm, I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad to be part of the initiative. I know I'm going to learn a lot from everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. So who is next? Uh, Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm, I'm Ahmed Lawal. Um, I reside in Mina. And um, it's an honor being a part of this um, great movement, this great project. Uh, really, climate change is one of those issues affecting the world right now. And um, there's a need to, to, to educate people, to enlighten people, to know how their actions um, affect or contribute to those effects of um, climate change. And also not just educating people, making moves, making actions, making decisions, making, taking steps to, to, to controlling these effects. So, I mean, being, being part of this project, being part of this movement is an honor. And um, I look forward to, to welcoming you all tonight, tonight to North Central. Um, that's um, the middle bit of the country. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Who is next to can speak? Please, we can't speak. We oh, can just type. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lucy Demian. Um, I am a graduate of geology, that's geosciences, and it's not being here. The environment is something we can, we can overemphasize the importance of awareness among ourselves because the change we desire begins with us. So I'm, I'm honored to be on this platform today and I look forward to learning a whole lot to take back to the immediate community and my immediate surroundings. So, yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Who is next? Who can speak, so, please? Good okay, go on. Good morning. Hey, Abbas. I'm both in state Nigeria, and I'm very glad to see myself. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, yeah. 
who can speak? Yes. We have, we have four minutes left for the introduction. Oh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hey, this is Ms. Maybe Judith Emily. Um, I studied mathematics education. I'm currently a lecturer at the Federal University of Bakaliki here. And I'm glad to be part of this project because in the community where I currently reside, they, they pass through a lot of negative impacts of climate change because at a time they lack water, the water will dry up. So I believe I'll be learning from experts on how to tackle these climate change actions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good it. Who's next? Who is next who can speak? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Rafael Kupa. I'm from the University of the University. I'm currently a student under the University of Guinea, doing a work at NS level for graduate studies. And uh, it was so surprising and a thing of joy to find myself in a more delicate Thank you. Who else can go for the next one minute? Hi. Oh, Hello, everyone. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, my name is Zolumide Idowu. I'm speaking from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm the co founder of International Climate Change Development Initiative. I'm super excited to be here because. Uh, uh, we will continue to learn and continue to encourage and develop ourselves to create and have a better society. And I'm so happy that we're having this call and we're having this project at this moment. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We are really honored to have you as well. Um, Mr. Olumide, Olumide the Wizard was one of our facilitators for this um, workshop so this morning. And um, we are really glad having you. Thank you very much. Okay, Adiba, you just unmute yourself and speak. Adiba, you go on. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, I'm Adiba Savo from August 8th, Nigeria. I'm, I'm a student and I'm an environmentalist and I'm so honored to be on this platform to learn a lot about climate change and how to have a sustainable environment. And I hope I'll be at the end of the training, I'll be able to know a lot and be able to carry a lot of projects out in having a sustainable environment. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I think we are done with the introduction and we should be expecting the minister soon for her opening speech for the opening address. And then till she comes, I don't know if any other person wants to make an introduction, you can just do that as fast as possible. Yeah, I, I would like to introduce myself. Okay. I'm Drisha Patak and uh, I'm a pop youth mentor currently based in India. And uh, for all of us to connect, I would like to drop a Pop Africa WhatsApp group link in the chat box. And you all can click on the link and join the WhatsApp group. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you Nisha, maybe, maybe also, um, uh, if you would agree, we could ask everybody to share their social media uh, handles here 
and that might make it easier also to sort of stay in touch and keep uh, keep informed. Yeah, just yes. want to yeah say a big warm welcome to everybody, and uh, we're just so thrilled to have you as part of the family. Thank you, Dr. Ash. Thank you. And we are also honored to have you as well. Thank you, and and congratulations on everything, um, Sam. And and uh, once again, a warm welcome to everyone and. Take it away, Sam. It'll be amazing. I'm sure all of you will will lead the way uh, to to a sustainable future and a safe and secure future for everyone. So I just want to say it's such a pleasure and honor to have all of you here, and we can't wait for all the good things you're going to do. A warm welcome to the family, to the Pop family. Thank you. Thank you. So who else want to go for introduction? I also want to go for introduction. Sam, maybe you want to tell your story a little bit? Okay, okay, so <laughs> maybe let me go. Thank okay, you. Um, so good morning, everybody. Hmm. I am Samuj Jukukuri, I'm a Nigerian, like um, all every Nigerian here. And um, I'm a climate activist and environmentalist a global youth representative and a speaker. And I'm passionate about my environment. I don't know about other persons, but it's something that I'm really passionate about. It's something that makes me sleepless. So it's something that when I think at times how people survive in the environment, tackling them, environmental injustice, pollution, degradation of our ecosystem, and many other things. I just keep wondering how do people survive and how do I help? my only two way to bring about a sustainable solution to the environment. And then I remember how I started and an undergraduate student then that just wanted to make a difference. So I I went to meet my friends and told them, well, how about we promoting green and fresh Nigeria? That was in COP24. So they were like, no, 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 no. It's not gonna work out do you then doing it. So I convinced them. They said, okay, they are going to come out that day to support me. But getting to that day, nobody came out. <laughs> so I was left all alone. I was like, wow. So I'm going to do this all alone. Nobody's going to support me in this and all that. So I didn't relent. I had to go into the, into the streets, into the streets of uh, Festa, Lagos, holding my placards and telling people, Please, hold, let me snap with you so that you advocate for Nigeria and promoting green and fresh environment. People are like, how much have they paid me for this? How much have they paid me to do this? And then when the reward comes, I hope I'm going to reach out to them. So we are even scared. They were like, ah, I want to use their pictures for rituals and <laughs> also diabolic stuff. But for those people that we are able to, they were really awesome. And that is how the journey started. Ever since then, two dates, and climate activism has really been something that's really part of me. And then apart from climate activism, I'm also a gender and a human rights instructor that promotes gender justice. So I don't like, um, if I, in my life, anything injustice is contradictory to my belief, anything injustice, be it gender, be it human, be it environment, as long as it's an injustice, is not related and then, I'm a pop youth mentor and a pop ambassador for Africa. And I believe through this project here in Nigeria, we will replicate it in other parts of the country as well. Just to tell them that we can tackle climate change in Nigeria and through the model we use in Nigeria, you too can use it in your country and get a sustainable result. Thank you very much. I'm Ambassador Samuel Shijiko Kore. Thank you. Fantastic, Sam. Uh, really inspiring, and 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 you know, I just want to say that it was so amazing when uh, to have met Sam the way we did, and uh, I just want to say he's someone who is very driven, very um, uh, you know, sort of persevering and positive, and I think those are absolutely incredible qualities. Um, and I think that's the reason I, I have 
I've been witness to Sam's journey to quite an extent, and I've seen how he's gone from stride to stride. And this is one more uh, important moment. And I just want to say, Sam, uh, you know, and to everybody here, first off, a warm welcome to the family. But I want to also say that I think it's, it takes a lot of these important qualities. You know, having the knowledge is one thing. The ability to act on it with uh, with relentless energy, um, which I know all of you will demonstrate. I know Sam um, certainly embraces that, uh, and and will uh, certainly be able to come together and make uh, things happen, so as to be able to ensure a, a safe and and healthy future for all. Uh, and I want to thank Sam for for you know for embracing that passion. The, the love with which he does what he does and also uh, the sense of, uh, you know, justice. And I think that's a very key part of this. It's our embracing everyone in the process and being fair and uh, looking at, at and acting upon climate uh, with a just lens. And I think that that's a very key thing because we cannot leave people behind in this process. Um, I also wanted to say, I think Dr. Norma wishes to say a few words about the pop movement. Maybe you want to introduce yourself and then say a few words and uh, I'll hand over to you. But I just want to say my heartiest congratulations once again, Sam and the entire family here. And it's such a pleasure and honor to have you with us. And I'm sure we'll do lots of great things together with your energy and goodness. So God bless everyone. And over to you, Dr. Norma. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ash. Thank you, Dr. Ash. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Norma Munoz from Mexico. And I am very happy to be with you today. And I will introduce you a little uh, about a uh, pop movement. And um, for us, it's a, a great session where hundreds of young people will share with us their knowledge and dedication like... Uh, some did today, to the care, advocacy, and protection of our planet. It is a great pleasure that we introduce you to the pop movement, which today is under the direction, supervision, coordination of Dr. Aspachori here with us. Our motto, youth inspired by knowledge. The pop movement, where pop stands for protect our planet, was founded by Dr. Arki Pachori, who brought the issue of climate change on the international agenda and led the Nobel Peace Laureate Organization, the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change as a vice chairman for five years and as a chairman for 13 years. The pub movement aims to empower the youth to have an active participation in addressing issues of climate change faced by our planet. Our mission is action. Our vision enable youth to be active in addressing issues of climate change faced by our planet. Core values, commitment to mobilize youth to protect our planet. Thank you so much to be a part of this enormous movement and uh, very grateful to have you here. Thank you, thank you so much. And now I will leave uh, Dr. Espachori to give another th uh, thoughts and uh, words before we start with the presentation, Sam. I think that that will be great. Thank you so much to all of you to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Norma. Thank you, Sam, um, for that very kind introduction. And um, all I want to say as we start, uh, I don't want to delay this further, but I just want to say that, you know, uh, we are part of a large global family and we truly believe in, in being and acting and supporting each other as family. And I think that's a very fundamental um, part of our existence and, and being in our values. So I just want to say embracing that, keeping it close to our hearts, and knowing that we love and respect each one of you, it means the world to, to have you here. I want to thank Sam once again uh, for his incredible leadership. I have no doubt as he exemplifies his um, true... Um, his true capability, he leave us all, continue to leave all, us all inspired. And uh, we will work together with each one of you and want to uh, know that we hold you close to our hearts. You remain family and we shall uh, 
together be able to go very far. I know that. And uh, so with that, a big warm welcome once again. And um, thank you for being here. And thank you for believing in all you do. And thank you for doing all that you do too. So thank you very much. A warm welcome to the Pop family. And Sam, we'll let you take it away. I think we're still uh, waiting. Um, if you wanted to conduct a small little energizer while we wait, or you want to do something else, let us know and we're all set to go. Okay, so I, I think yeah, from now till the next 10, 30 minutes, if um, we don't have um, the Honorable um, the Minister, of, um, Minister of State for Environment in our midst, then we may just move on to the next section. Then whenever she comes, she can just give us her address. I think that would be okay. So I don't know. Um, I've seen um, Mr. Olomide Dewu here. He's somebody I respect so much. Um, I remember the first organization I wanted to volunteer for that I was really desperate then to volunteer for was ICCDI. Sincerely, I followed them. On, I followed them on Facebook. I often reshared their post on Facebook. I was just so so passionate about volunteering for them because I saw their post and I saw what they did. And I was with the Pop family. Here in Nigeria, this is just the organization I wanted to volunteer for here in Nigeria because I believe they can also help me in my, in my um, climate skills and all that. So for Mr. Olomide Dosa, I don't know if you can just give us a word of encouragement and just motivation. What really motivated you? Just your own story anyway. Yeah, we thought, okay. Hello? Yes. Is, is he here with us? Hello, it's Olumide. Uh, okay, so we also have um, Bukola. Bukola is also someone that inspired me as well in World Merits. I remember how I joined World Merits through um, Kama, if I'm not mistaken. And then Dr. Ash connected me to him. And then ever since then, World Merits has been a family to me. And they have really done inspiring things that has really motivated me as well, not just in the field of climate, but in the field of social justice, caring for humanity and also doing a whole lot of work for humanity. So, this is Mbukola. I don't know if you have any word for us. It's an encouragement and also a brief of your story that will help. Hello, can we go ahead and make good morning, everyone? Yeah, we can hear you. Good morning. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Samuel. Thank you so much, also, Dr. Yeah, and Hash. It's so nice seeing you. Yes. Yes, it's so great to be here with you, Bukola. Thank you so much for everything My you do. My name is Bukola Yeah. My name is Bukola Olaliri, and um, I'm the country council president for World Mary in Nigeria. And I'm also the founder of Moms and Tech. Well, you said I should come and encourage, but man, okay, I think this is more of climate change. And um, I really want to appreciate everyone that has joined this call this morning. Because for joining this call, I see it as um, you having the desire to make the world and your environment better. And really, we need to stand up and change the narrative as regards climate change. And I want to say that on this journey, it might be so lonely, but please don't give up on it. Try as much as you can to keep pressing that, to keep changing the narrative to keep educating people about climate change because really we need to, to rescue the world. So I think that's the least bit of the motivation I'm going to share this morning before my session. So thank you so much yet again. Okay, thank you. So there is also someone as well here. Okay, um, I can see some people from my working group. Okay, let me just introduce my working group team here. 
before we, we commence fully. Um, I can see Mr. Shidebere Emmanuel. Mr. Shidebere Emmanuel is um, part of the POP Nigeria Working Group. He's um, our, partner in, um, our partnership coordinator that helps us in terms of getting partnerships. And then um, I can see, so sorry about that. Okay, I can see she she do she do may she do may be Idemili. She's our zonal contact person. And then Mr. Lukeman is also part of our zonal person. And I can see Onyedika Eguato. He's the person that designed the flyer this morning I sent across. So he's our graphic designer and he's really doing awesome. And then I can see Manzu. He's um, a content developer, so I don't I don't know if I'm missing anybody else. But that's really awesome. And then um, I can see my very good friend, who has really helped me in this project, Gerard Imo. He's um, a in a, a Nigeria a, a Nigerian national representative of Etsy Network. So Gerard, please can you just give a brief introduction and basically if you want to share anything with us. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm happy to see uh, different young people. I think one of the world. My name is Gerald. I'm like you're Gerard, um, Gerard, you're breaking up. Yeah, breaking up. Most importantly, I'm a climate activist um, and international development expert. And I have a marketing current coordinator. Uh, so, yeah, okay. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Yes, a little bit. Is it clear now? Yes, yes, yes. Can you hear me? No, we can't. It, it, it seems maybe if we could do it without the video. Grand, uh, if you can switch off your video and then try, maybe then uh, it works fine. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If it's okay, I have to go outside. The, but yeah. what I will do is only introduction. Then it green also do it. I don't know. I have a bright eye, but it's it's, it's surprising. So. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Is it better? Hello. Is it better? Wow. I think I have to. Okay, um, is can you can you try and type it yeah. in the chat and then maybe Sam can read it out for everyone. No. Okay. He says he'll fix the issue in 20 minutes. Can we move on, Sam? Okay. Yeah, okay, good. so Thank you. We, we can just start with um, the first section we have for today, which is um, on the capacity building, which we handled by POP, by POP movement. So we're about to be come out and then um, I think we um, have them um, So come on, please, for this section. Mm -hmm. I think we have Mrs. Hernandez as well. She's also part of this section for the capacity building.
Sam, Sam, did you invite someone? Yes, 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 for the capacity, for the capacity building. Hope, hope should take that. Okay. Let's start with the first section, yes. Okay, so uh, can we start the session, please, Komal? Uh, we are supposed to start the capacity building uh, session. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you, Sam. I think, uh, Komal, are you starting something? Uh, we can't hear you. So you and Dr. Norma will be starting this session and then Vanessa will take over with, with the peace building session. Uh, no, I think Vanessa is going to conduct the whole thing, right? But uh, in any case, we can start um, while we wait. Is Vanessa joining us, Dr. Norma, if you don't mind informing? Can you just tell Vanessa to join? Yeah, I just uh, send a message and I'm calling her. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, let's get started, Dr. Norma, um, in that case. And uh, the, the opening question, actually, just to begin with a little bit of brainstorming, would be to ask you if you could share with us what in your mind is, is climate change? What, is it, what does it mean to you? And, you know, maybe if you, uh, yeah, we can speak one at a time, but just to get a sense, because we did hear a lot of people share just now how they feel inspired to work on this issue. And there's a lot of connection also individually to this uh, phenomena. But just to understand what in your mind is climate change to you? Again, no right or wrong answers. Just talk about what you think it is. Anyone? Okay, anyone could answer, right? Sure. Please, please. Okay. Atta. Okay. Um, so basically, I want to say it's climate change is a is a shift. Okay, in the climate um condition of a place or of the world at, at large. Now this is it, it's, let me just, let me break it down a bit. Mm -hmm. Years back, years back, we, we've always had the ozone layer helping the, the radiation, okay, helping to reduce radiation on the earth's surface, mm -hmm. which has, uh, where, whereby the greenhouse effect have been on a good side, but now, with the, with, with the emission of carbon, the excess emission of carbon into the atmosphere, wearing mm -hmm. over the ozone layers, okay? Depleting the ozone layer. I mean, the, 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 the radiation is not intense on the Earth's surface. And this has caused a lot of changes in the atmospheric condition mm -hmm. okay, of the Earth. Now, causing excess rainfall, causing excess evaporation, causing excess heat, okay, on the atmosphere itself. And today, like, especially here in the north, um, when I checked um, the degree, the centuries of last year and this year, I could see a clear difference, okay? Now, last year, we were having about 30, 39 um, degrees Celsius, 40 degrees Celsius. This year, it has increased. And what's happening? Climate change. I mean, things is changing. Just like how man, uh, man is dynamic is changing, okay, in the activities, okay, this dynamic um, aspect of man is creating more effects, okay, more the, the, um, negative effects, okay, to the climate itself. And okay, whereby sorry, this sorry. climate... Uh, sorry, Atta. Um, we have um, the Federal Minister of Environment no? here with us. Okay. And then she will be giving her opening, opening um, address in this regard. So we'd just like to have that now afterwards okay. to continue to enjoy that thing, please. Thank you. Okay, okay great. Thank I you. just uh, want to say Atta, thank you. And uh, please, Sam. Okay, so can we have the minister to give us the speech if she's, if she's ready now? Because they just joined us, so. I think uh, their audio is not connected. 
Federal Ministry of Environment, their their audio is not connected. Okay, let me just shut them off. Okay. Are they here just now? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, they they are there, but their audio is not connected. So uh, maybe. I see. I see. Um, I just shut it up. Let me see. <laughs> So let, let's let's just continue to the audio is connected. Sorry for that interruption anyway. Um, okay, so so we just continue? I mean uh, yes, unless yes. they're so waiting it's, to speak. It's okay. connected. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's connected. Okay. No, it's not connected yet. Let's oh. just continue. Okay. All right. Okay. So Atta, yes, uh, you're right. And then we have some comments in the chat as well. Uh, Lucy yes, sir, thank you so much for your uh, thoughts, uh, did anybody else want to add anything, you know, in your perspective, uh, you know, what is, what is climate change? Anyone else who wanted to add to that? Um, somebody has uh, a right hand. Adebayo, Adebayo Samuel. Samuel and Rafael. Adebayo. Dr. Norma, what did you say? So so we, we have somebody who has uh, raised the hand, Rafael and Adebayo oh. Simon. Okay, please, please continue. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, in, in the context uh, climate, the context climate change, see, basically, what is climate change? Mm -hmm. Based from my own perspective, Wait, and I, climate. See climate, I see climate change is a long-term change in the outreach uh, weather pattern that, uh, that have come on or that have come to define it local, Hi, regional, and yes. global okay. climate. Hello, good morning, everyone. Morning, good morning. Man. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Good morning. Please go on, ma'am. Okay, good morning. My name is, uh, I am Dr. Priscilla Chakba. Um, I'm representing the Honorable Minister of State for Environment on this program, and I'm going to be reading her speech. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm a little bit late, and I hope that you have not gone too far for me to make my, to deliver the Honorable Minister of State Chief Sharon Ikazazo's speech. Please go on, ma'am. Hello, you want me to go yes, ahead? Please. Yes, go on, go ahead, Ma, go ahead. Okay, on behalf of the Honorable Minister of State, Chief Sharon, State for Environment Chief Sharon Ikazuazo, uh, I wish to first and foremost congratulate uh, the organizers of this uh, webinar uh, who uh, protect our planet inspired by youth inspired by knowledge. Indeed, the Honorable Minister is very passionate about the work of the youth and she's inspired. So your logo, I mean, you are this thing which you talk about youth inspired by knowledge is, is very apt. And so let me start on that note. But let me also just read what the Honorable Minister has directed me to read on her behalf. I'm glad to be speaking to environmentally passionate minds at these two days virtual training and workshop. I want to congratulate the POP movement for an amazing initiative 
focusing on tackling climate change, in part through climate education. I extend my greetings to all the work experienced facilitators of the training and workshop. I know you will do an amazing job. More especially, I congratulate all the participants of this project who were selected across the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria to initiate this project in their state. Climate education is the core part of sustainability and it is fundamental towards creating the change we want in our society. In our world today, we are faced with global issues of climate change and COVID-19. Sharing the world apart like never before with high death scores, economic recession and ecological justice as a result of our action towards our, our environment. And we have the price to pay now by providing a sustainable lasting solution to it or leave it that way while it lingers more, causing us great harm with no one to rescue us. Climate action is a responsibility of all, by all, and for all, for the protection of our planet. Regeneration of our ecosystem and conservation of our biodiversity. Hence, lack of climate action could lead to more crises and bring about a lesser and fair attitude towards other initiatives that seeks to build an equitable society. In the same vein, I would like to address everyone here with keen focus on the participants who I believe are youths with deep interest and concern for the environment, not to relent during the on-site execution phase of the project, as it will serve as an opportunity for them to teach people about climate change and how to tackle it since it has become a responsibility for all. Through this project, you will act as climate educators, not just for your community or state, but in Nigeria, Africa, and the world at large, as your knowledge in this project will be replicated in many societies across the globe. We recognize the great contribution of youth towards climate action, and it is part of my mandate to keep supporting youth participation. Though not everybody believes that climate change is real, not because they choose not to believe, rather they have been educated about it. And also no one has spoken to them about climate change. It's negative impacts on our environment, health and living species with little or no knowledge on how to tackle it through sustainable environmental practices. Such initiatives like this is needed in bridging the knowledge gap as a contribution to solving societal issues from climate-related crises. This is also a way of building a climate smart generation and I admonish you all to follow the process towards meaningful engagement. Nigeria being a gender and climate sensitive country, it is important we get as many young people into climate action because being a leader of tomorrow starts now. So today, I welcome this initiative that seeks to build up advocacy skills as a tool to speak up for your environment and balance gender-related issues. Climate change has huge impact on the female gender, which I believe that this project will try to cover those areas and promote equality. I urge you all, to keep expanding your reach on this initiative to every part of Nigeria. I want to use this opportunity to once again congratulate the organizers of this, the educators and the trainers that at the end of the day, the youth that have been selected from this, for this training and for this program will be able to step down the training that they have received from today. And our country will be better when we have the young people that are spearheading the issues of climate change in our country, Africa, and the globe. Thank you and God bless. So that is the speech of the Honorable Minister of State for Environment.
I want to thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much, Dr. Patricia. Dr. Patricia is the SA to the Minister of um, Honorable Minister of Environment. We are, are happy to have you representing the Honorable Minister. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your inspiring words, for your honorable presence, and for your important message. We're very grateful to you and look forward to keeping you posted on the progress of the, the initiative as, as the youth of Nigeria uh, put, um, put work and action on climate change uh, on, on a global map and uh, lead the way in Africa and around the world. So we're very grateful to you and thank you very much once again. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so um, Dr. Ash, sorry. Um, Vanessa just came in and um, Gerard also just came in as well from Earth Day Network. So he just, Thank he you. was introducing himself before. So he just want to give us a brief introduction and I will proceed as well with this section. So sorry about. No, no, not at all. Thank you. This is, this is a very important uh, message and we are grateful for the opportunity. Please, thank you. And we right. thank the Honorable Minister as well. Thank you very much. All right. Gerard, please. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me now. Yes, yes, can yes. Can you hear me now? Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I have a private Wi-Fi, but I'm surprised that um, it misbehaves sometimes. Okay, so um, my name is Gerald, I'm a Nigerian, and most importantly, I'm a climate activist. I'm an international development uh, expert by profession. And I'm also the national coordinator for Earth Day uh, in Nigeria. And uh, my interest in Work my, I'm very much interested in working with young people, inspiring leadership. Uh, I myself am an example of someone that has, I've, I've, I've been a leader from the grassroots. I founded an organization in Nigeria that we are working in rural communities and the, the you, it would be surprising to know that you know the climate change issue is everywhere. In fact, the it's even easier to find issues that are um, local. You know, to relate yourself with issues that are local, and, and issues that are even bigger. So my what I'm going to be doing is um, with um, POP, and my own session is tomorrow. Is I'm going to um, I have a 30 minute session, and I'm going to be inspiring uh, young people. I'm going to tell them a little bit of my story, my climate action, my climate journey, and also inspire you to, you know, great leadership. I know that this is not just a thing of, oh, okay, I'm being, I'm excited about it, you know. I'm excited about climate change. It's a real issue and how you can also link what you're doing to your, your career. So, thank you very much. Um, I'll meet everyone here again tomorrow. I'm going to be on on the session, just listening. And tomorrow again, I'll be um, I'll be here to talk. Thank you very much. It's quite cool. Uh, hi, thank you, Gerard. Gerard is um, calling from Germany. Yeah, he's studying. And he's, um, I think he's PhD or so. So thank you for coming. So Dr. Ash, please. So sorry for that. Not at all. It's, it's such a pleasure. Uh, and Gerald, thank you so much for your for your passion and, and the fact that you're out in the cold trying to communicate with us right now in itself is indicative of, you know, your your intention to to progress. And, and this is the kind of uh, passion and commitment and conviction we need. So, uh, you know, we were just in a conversation here about what climate change uh, really is. And, um, and, you know, Atta, you were saying something, we had a few comments in the, in the chat, and I'm wondering if one more person wants to talk about what climate change means to them, you know, what is this issue that we're talking about here? Anybody? Just one more person, and then we'll, we'll move okay. into Ade Adebayo, Adebayo, can you go? Your hand has been up since. <laughs> Please.
who wanted to speak? Anyone? I think I did. Please, anyone can go, please. I think so. Okay, okay. Have some... Yes. Atta, please. You were saying something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay. Based on the context, you? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Rafael. Yeah. Yes. You know, I, I, I was I was saying something before the honorable minister came in. So it was uh, I was talking on based on the concept uh, climate actions, like climate change was the causes of the simple definition about it, like climate change is a long-term uh, change in the average weather pattern that has come to, to define heads locally, regionally, and uh, global climate. So these uh, changes have a broad range of, of, of observed uh, effects that are synonymous with the terms. So, but there are some basic signs and some uh, basic uh, things that it is expected for those who are who don't really know or who are not conversant. There are some signs of climate change. We talked about a uh, 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 high temperature or mm -hmm. drought, uh, talking of uh, uh, wider uh, weather, then changing rain and snow pattern, less uh, snow pack, melting uh, and uh, glasses uh, shrinking and uh, sea ice. All these are uh, as a result of uh, uh, climate change. And also, what are the effects? Uh, it increased heat, drought, and uh, insect, insect outbreak. All these things we see around our environment as a result of uh, climate actions and climate change. So these all are linked to climate change. It has increased the uh, wildfires, declining yeah. water supply, reduces mm -hmm. uh, agricultural heat, and uh, different health impacts uh, cities due to heat and uh, flooding and erosion in the coastal areas, additional, additional concerns. So it's, uh, it's something that within me, I think uh, over here in Nigeria, we are, we are experiencing a lot of these, these uh, actions and uh, it has really affected uh, the, the, the environment negatively. And um, to stop all this, how can we? It's for us to, as we are doing now, we, we are to speak up, speak, uh, power Great. your home, yeah. power your home with uh, renewable energy. Then uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, weatherize, uh, weatherize stuff like that, then invest in energy, efficient appliances and also yeah. reduce water waste then um, actually eat the food you buy and make less of its meat so all these things are Very good. As, okay are, are something to stop and uh, global warming buying and uh, better bulbs Super. and pull the plugs so these are some little areas that uh, i really want to to like uh, contribute, like thank you. to also educate us about. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rafael. I just wanted to say we're going to have a little bit more time to talk about what we can do about the issue. Uh, but I think what you shared is really great and has got us on to a new subject, which was the next question, really. Uh, and we will define what climate change is. But I want to ask uh, anybody here in the group. Why do you think, uh, why are we facing climate change? Can anybody, can anybody throw a light on that? Any, anyone? What, what are the reasons? We have, we, um, hello, everybody. Hello, yeah, hello, Lucy, feel, yes. We, I yes. feel why we're facing climate change is a result of our action. Mm -hmm. Lucy? on our planet Earth. Like many people using their generator, the film from the generator goes out to the, to the surface of the Earth and it's, it disturbs our ozone layer. The perfume we wear, our activities, the mining and everything we do affects us. That's why we're coming, our environment, our, rather our um, climate is suffering from our actions. And that's why we all still need to come together and provide a solution 
to repair what we use our hands to destroy, which begins with awareness. Because some people don't know that this thing they do is actually wrong. Absolutely. So you I think, terrific. yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's everybody thing. It's our, it's result of what we are doing. And I'm happy we are here to start something because just like what our honorable minister said, being a leader of tomorrow begins with you and begins now. Yeah. So I think now is the perfect time. So thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Lucy. I totally agree with you. And I do want to reflect on the words of the, the honorable minister and, and the fact that, uh, you know, youth are leaders of today as well. You know, youth are certainly leaders of tomorrow, but youth are leaders of today. And, and we have a small window of opportunity when we can affect this issue and we can make a difference and we can secure our futures. And just like the remarks that Atta made also in the chat here, it's a real thing. And our, our actions count, whether it is to contributing or to mitigating or adapting. So I totally agree with you and thank you, Lucy, as well. Anybody else? Why is it we are facing this issue? Yes, uh, all activities you are carrying out uh, uh, what causes uh, climate change because industrial waste products uh, causes climate change. People are burning refuses are causing climate change. All these things are what comes together that uh, affect our climate change. As I can say that the climate change is just the effect of the weather. So all the activity we are carrying out are what uh, causes uh, climate change and. Uh, and every one of us, uh, most especially people who, are, who doesn't know about this, and I believe with the, uh, with, with the help of this project, uh, uh, we, can, we can overcome it. Yes, we can. Absolutely. And the important thing to understand is that you're absolutely right. You've all pointed, to this, pointed, pointed this out and that it is a consequence of human action. The matter is that the climate change that we are experiencing right now is a consequence of our own actions, human action, and it is our, uh, you know, um, dependence on fossil fuels and coal uh, and natural gas as a result of which we are emitting huge amounts of carbon and, and methane, which are warming our planet. And what we are seeing is. Uh, and an unprecedented increase in temperatures, but also extreme weather events. And we are seeing this, whether it's forest fires, you pointed out floods, uh, you know, droughts. Uh, and I think the most important thing for us to understand is that we do have a small chance to address this issue. It's a small window of time. We have less than a decade now, but our own futures are dependent on this. And we must also understand as we're living through a pandemic right now, that human health is affected uh, and that, that climate change has impacts on every dimension of our lives. And if we don't look after the health of the planet and the health of all species that we are interdependent on, uh, you know, on, on an average, on in a single 24 hour period, we are permanently creating an extinction of 150 to 200 species of flora and fauna on a daily basis, never to come back. And I, what we must understand is that our own existence and our own health is dependent on the health of the planet and the health of every species. So, so it's very, very important that we address this issue and we do it urgently and that we know now uh, and science is very clearly indicated and this is where the youth inspired by knowledge element comes in that uh, that we have enough science to clearly indicate that we have less than a decade now to address this issue. So absolutely, I totally agree with you that all of us need to come together and we need to address this issue with complete priority. It is our futures and is the future of our families going forward. You know, each of our children and grandchildren whose futures are dependent now on our action today. And you, you know, we don't want to be in a position where 
we jeopardize the future of all generations to come because it is up to us now to take action. And we are going to need action on many different fronts. It's going to need uh, you know, action in terms of addressing uh, how we do things, use of rena renewable energies, you know, uh, adoption of, of clean technologies. Rafael alluded to a whole lot of issues. And we will now deliberate a little bit more about that. But before we break into groups, I wanted to ask Dr. Norma, did you want to say anything as we move into uh, some, some real serious brainstorming on what we can do uh, as, as youth in blazing and trailblazing the, the path forward to a secure, sustainable, and, 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 and um, future that addresses the issue of climate change. Did you want to say a few words, please? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, well, I think that uh, what we can do is really to take actions because climate change is just in front of us. We cannot do anything else than facing now all the problems that we are uh, living uh, at this moment and the actions will be the only ones who will take us a little away if not completely uh, away of the problem because really okay. you can believe us that the problem is very strong mm -hmm. the species are disappearing in a very fast way all the ecosystems like uh, for instance the arctic is uh, melting now and with all the problems that we will face with that. So why would, why would the melting of the Arctic be an issue? Can anybody tell us? Can anybody say, wh why, why would it matter that the Arctic is melting? Anyone? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, let, let me come in there. <laughs> yeah, with the, with the intense heat. Now, the Arctic was meant to be, um, was meant to be the, the freezing zone of the Earth. Okay, the cold zone of the Earth. Now, with it melting down, our oceans tend to increase. And yes. remember, the water is 70% yes. of the Earth. The Earth is the, the land surface. The little sphere is just 30%. So when we have so much hydrosphere, all right, um, the melting of solid hydrosphere into liquid um, hydrosphere, uh, that, that will cause so much um, tsunami, so much um, flooding. Our land will be lost. So we'll not have a future in a lot. Super. Yeah. Uh, Ada, also, I want to. At least for now. <laughs> okay. Sorry, yeah, Ada, we are losing you, but I did want to say you're absolutely right that about three fourths of the Earth's surface is actually ocean. And, and you know, uh, with the melting of the ice, certainly sea level rise is a major issue. Uh, also, I want to say that the, uh, the oceans actually absorb a lot of the carbon dioxide that we are producing as a result of our dependence on, on fossil fuels and so on. Uh, but, but, and as, as the ocean also warms up, uh, you know, uh, we are, and the permafrost, more importantly, in the Arctic region uh, were to melt, we'll be releasing unprecedented yes. amounts of carbon dioxide, which uh, is actually currently stored in the permafrost, which is really the permanent ice in the Arctic region. This is supposed to be the permanent ice in the Arctic region, but with the rise, rise of the temperatures, not only are the glaciers melting, but the permafrost is melting. And as permafrost is melting, we are releasing even larger amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which then further exacerbates the climate uh, issue and also the rate at which um, you know, climate change is taking place. So, so what we must understand is that our, uh, our dependence on every part of the planet is, is somehow connected and, and interdependent. And we cannot assume that we were to chuck a bunch of plastic over here, um, heaven forbid, but we people are doing it in, in one part of the planet that it won't show up in another part of the planet, uh, certainly jeopardize um, you know, marine life, but also human life. And the reason that is the case is because um, you know, this, this plastic stays for hundreds and hundreds of years. It doesn't, bio, it doesn't biodegrade. And then it turns into microplastic, it seeps into soil, and then we consume it, which of course has got very serious implications for human health, but also for all other forms of life that are affected by it. So, 
these are just a few examples, but uh, we must understand that every action will have ramifications for the health of the planet. And we need to work in a concerted manner in order to be able to address this issue. And certainly pollution, pl uh, plastic pollution, uh, and, and plastic is, a, is, is produced from petroleum. Uh, and, and, you know, it does not go anywhere. It just stays on the planet. Uh, we, we call it single use plastic. We use it once, we chuck it but then it says for lifetimes to come. So we, we must understand that, you know, all of these things are um, of consequence. And um, I think Komal has uh, dropped a couple of questions here, but I'm, I'm not sure. So we were gonna have a small uh, breakout room, uh, Komal, uh, and then I think you said that uh, Vanessa was gonna take over after that, am I right? Yeah. Okay, so, so what we were gonna do uh, then is actually, um, break out into groups and we were gonna ask each group to brainstorm about a couple of things, please. Okay, and we can come back and we can have more questions also if you like, but there were a couple of questions, a couple of things we want you to break out into groups and think about. Number one, what are the local climate related issues and challenges that we face? And two is what are the solutions and actions we can take? So, um, you know, we'd like to break out into groups and each group will brainstorm about the geography we're in, what are the climate issues we face, and what are the solutions and actions we can take to address those issues. Um, and I'm gonna ask uh, Komal uh, to work with Sam to figure out how many groups we'll, uh, we'll be able to have depending on geography here. Uh, and also, I want to say that we'll have a few minutes to, to brainstorm, uh, and then we will come back, and in three minutes, we'll make a presentation. So you can decide who in your group is going to present. Um, and yeah, thank you for putting the question out there. One is what the issues are, and two is what are the solutions and actions. So please think uh, you know, creatively about what actions we can take. This is an opportunity for us to address the issues that our communities are facing, that we are facing as a family in different parts of the world. So what I would suggest, Kumal, is that uh, if you and Sam don't mind just working on this, it would be ideal if we were to do this by geography. So, you know, maybe three or four groups, uh, each group would have about two to three minutes to come back and present what the issues are and what the actions would be. Uh, and we'll get a few minutes to brainstorm. And while you and Sam figure that out, I'm going to ask one question, which Rafael actually brought up, which was that our issue of diet, especially eliminating meat from our diet, is something that would be important. So while uh, Sam and Komal figure out how to break us up into rooms, I'm going to ask you, why is our diet important and why uh, is, has meat any, got anything to do with this? Anyone? Why do meat diets have an implication on the planet? Rafael, did you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, I, I really love to say something. Please, again, with the question. Yes, the question is, why is a meat diet uh, or moving away from a meat diet important to <laughs> Say the meat diet. Hello. Between meat. I think we lost oxygen. Oh, oh. I said, really. what is the link between meat? Okay, what is the link between meat-based diets and climate change? Okay, meat-based diets. Yes. Okay, okay. Meat based diet to so climate change, right? If if I got the question, am I yeah. right? Yes. Yes. What is the link? Yeah, I what is the link between a meat based diet please. and climate change? Can somebody with a stable connection ask the question on my behalf? I put it in the chat. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think it's better. Like, um, I. Looking at the plant and based diet, like, um, are you with me now? Yes, we can plant, hear you. Yeah, plant based diets can fight and climate change, like uh, shifting to plant based diets. 
they are high in uh, uh, coarser grain, fruit, vegetable, nuts, and seeds, while limiting meat intakes to to uh, to around 60 grams per uh, person per day, could reduce agricultural emotion by up to eight uh, uh, gigations, gigato uh, of uh, gabons each year, thereby helping the, um, uh, the mitigating climate change. So I think uh, um, uh, and introducing or uh, we buying the idea of um, plant uh, plant based diets can also help us in terms of um, achieving our sustainable development in terms of um, climate action. So the 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 the, the diets what we consume we have to be more more pathetic about it because. Um, the consumption rate of uh, meat, this um, red meat, and you know, meats do contain a high cholesterol level. So this uh, also has another effect uh, in, in, in the system of the human being. So whereby when there is too much uh, cholesterol level in the system, or maybe in the heart cause or the heart arteries, or it could lead to atherosclerosis. So, that aspect is uh, is something that should be uh, considered in terms of um, shifting to plant based okay. diets. Thank okay, you. so so that's a good point, uh, Rafael. I just wanted to say yes. Uh, eating meat has has implications on human health, but very importantly, from the planet point of view, the reason uh, you know eating meat has a lot of uh, implication from climate from the climate change perspective is that number one. Uh, maybe we can mute our uh, microphones. Yeah, thank you. Uh, number one, uh, you know, just, just to give you one example, uh, when you eat a hamburger, uh, you know, you consume 2000 liters of water for just one piece of meat in a burger. And, th and that is because in order to raise the cattle for, uh, and farming for, uh, for burger, you need to consume water because you're going to, you're going to feed them. And so in order to grow their feed, you need to pour water and, you know, large amounts of water are being used. But the other thing is that uh, cattle is also generating a lot of methane. Methane is, uh, is in, in some senses even worse than carbon dioxide. So uh, we are further adding to, to, um, to, to global warming and, and, and the impacts of climate change as a consequence of raising, um, you know, meat and cattle for the purpose of people's dietary requirements. So, um, you know, being, being uh, on a plant-based diet is definitely more healthy, like you rightly said, for human health and also for the health of the planet. So, um, you know, these are things that you want to think about because what we eat, how we live, what we buy, what we throw, how we throw it, what we do with it, all of these things have implications for uh, the health of the planet and also human health, because these are all interconnected and the health of all species that we share the planet with. And hopefully we can find ways to, to live in harmony with other species rather than create a situation of extinction of flora and fauna on a, on a daily basis, which is what we're doing right now. So uh, I'm gonna now ask Komal, uh, we are gonna break into ro to rooms uh, and we are going to brainstorm about what issues, let's go local. What are the climate issues that we face where we are? And what are the actions and solutions we can implement practically to address those issues? And we're gonna have a few minutes to brainstorm in our groups, and then we are gonna come back and present our thoughts. Uh, and we want you to continue to develop those thoughts going forward. So Komal, uh, could, could I request you to help with uh, the breakouts? Does anybody have any questions about what we'll do in the breakout room? Yes, sir. Trisha is creating the breakout rooms. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. so please, before, before we break into breakout rooms, um, I would like to encourage us all in our names. If for anybody that wants to rename, you can just type on, go to the participant space, type your, just click. Then you can see, um, you can see rename. I think so. There's a rename there. You can see rename. Just type your name. And if you are in West, east north or south just write your name and put west or north or south we just want to use them the four the four regions globally to to, to do this breakout section into four breakout rooms 
So if we can do that, fine. Um, Oluwa, Oluwa Tony has a question. Please go on. Oluwa Tony. Time is okay. We can divide it uh, accordingly. Okay. Don't worry. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Let's okay. break out then. We we'll okay. spend a few minutes in breakout rooms and then present. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Drisha Koma. You all will get a notification to join the breakout room. Please click on that. Um, I just wanted to ask, should I put uh, you guys also in the breakout rooms? Who's you guys? Uh, I mean, the pop team who are left. Um, yeah, if somebody wants to go, um, I, think, I think the questions are clear. Um, but if anybody wants to split, yes. Will, will, how many minutes are we doing the groups for? Zusha? Um, so I signed it for 10 minutes, but I think it didn't yeah, work. Right. It didn't work, so it will close in 2.5 minutes. And then I'll again have to put them back. Oh, okay. All right, okay. So let them, let them uh, start. Is everyone back? You go by Arta with a fine long sandy stretch of beach located in the state of Nayarit in Mexico. Along the coastside of the warm water of the Pacific became the epicenter for an international conference and festival where students from universities around the world, across countries like Mexico, Peru, South Africa, the United States of America, Ukraine, and India, participated with youthful enthusiasm for youth-led climate action on August 19 and 20, 2019. This two-day event hosted by the pop movement was tremendously rewarding and successful. The festival commenced with the distinguished presence of doctors Ash Pachori, Norma Patricia, Adrian Fernandez, Fernando Santiago Gomez Martinez, R. Renaga, Carlos Amberto, R. K. Pachori. 
During the two-day festival, international youth showcased their wide range of sustainability initiatives that shared the vision of comprehensively addressing the growing environmental concerns. With around 75 participants, this two-day festival was one of a kind as it served as a platform for sharing knowledge with a sustained festive element. A myriad of exhibits, workshops, presentations, and activities made it interesting by the exuberance of youthful participation. It revealed the overarching truth of the boundless potential that youth can collectively wield in transforming the threatened future as they lead with action inspired by knowledge. No Planet B, the state of the climate emergency, a wall of youth activism in widening commitments, showcased by different workshops, waste segregation and management, eco-eaters, one less straw. Um, I would like to request everybody to please join the session. You will get a request at the bottom to join the session, the, to join the breakout room. There were uh, five to 10 people who were in the main session. So we had to call everybody back. Can I request everybody to join the breakout rooms again, please? Thank you. Can I request everybody to please uh, select and go to the breakout rooms? Menzo, Jemu, Dixon. You must have got a request to join a breakout room. Please click on that. Komal, we can stream the video. Thank you. Green puzzle in Kusai, carbon footprint. Moving on the presentations. The environmental index project. Strengthening Environmental Education in the Liamagizu Sector, District and Province of Oshapampa, Peru. Plastic Food Contact Materials in India. The festival closed with a cultural component. A group of students and professors from the University of Guadalajara showcased their ecological initiatives through a powerful theatrical performance, Heroes Never Die. This was followed by a music concert by the pop movement's youth music ambassador, Jimena Villalon, who with her extraordinary voice, united the minds, hearts, and souls of the young participants. Risha, not everybody's in the group. Yes, sir, but uh, there are a few people who haven't joined.
Uh, should should the group that's present here start brainstorming here? Yes, I think we can do that. Yeah. So the so we know the question. Uh, Tito, Ahmed, Andrew, Abu Bakar, Peter. Um, uh, did did you follow the question? Uh, can you hear us? Uh, I don't know if anybody can hear though. Uh, is there a problem with connection here? I'm not sure. T2, Andrew? Andrew? Andrew, can you hear? Peter? Uh, John, I think there's a problem with the. Huh? Uh, I'm here, sir. Uh, Obasi? Sir, I'm hearing you. Oh, you can hear. Great. Yes, sir. Uh, so you know what? Um, did you, you, you haven't received uh, a link to join a, a, a meeting room, have you? Yes, sir. Can, can you join the meeting room? Everybody who's here? OK, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Abu Bakar. Yes, Obasi, sir, you, you too, please. Ahmed, Andrew, uh, you'll receive. Peter, you'll receive a link to join um, a meeting room. Okay, sir. Thank you. Excellent. Obasi, can you can you click the ring link, please? Okay, Peter, I don't know if you can see the link and Emma. There'll be a link to join one of the meeting rooms. Thank you. Emma, uh, just uh, click join as you receive the pop-up. We have uh, Frank. Mr. Frank, Frank. Uh, from this Enugu State President. I see. Uh, warm welcome to Mr. Frank. And uh, maybe we could. Hi, yeah, Frank. Good, good, good morning. How are you, Frank? I'm fine. I'm fine. And you? Wonderful. Uh, we are delighted to have you here. Frank, we, have, <laughs> we have breakout rooms where people are brainstorming. Maybe we could assign Mr. Frank a room as well. And Peter's trying to come back, but I hope Emma is able to join one of the groups. Thank you for joining. Nobody from Nigeria here yet. No, uh, so lots of people, Frank. Uh, there are a lot of people. Uh, it's just that everybody's in a breakout room. You will see a join button. If you don't mind just clicking the button and joining the group. All right. Thank you, Frank. And Emma, if you could do the same, please. Uh, 
Oh, so sorry, please. How do I join the, the other room, the breakout room, please? Okay, okay, great question. Uh, the uh, you know you'll just see a pop up that says join, um, it, and then it has another button called not now. If you can click join, that should that should help you connect right away. All right, all right, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, I can't join the breakout room. Once I join, it exits me from Zoom completely. Oh, that's strange. Okay. Um, so um, maybe we can try another room. Komal, is it possible? Trying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope it works. Thank you. We had given 10. I think there are a few fewer minutes left now, Koma. Yes, Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I think of uh, Frank and um, Abu Bakar are the only two. It's yes, sir. so uh, Frank, you have been assigned to group room number two, and uh, Abu Bakar, you have been assigned to room number three. You must have got a request to join room, take out room. Uh, yeah, there'll be a little pop up box that will show up all you have to do is click join all right i'm waiting for a pop up still waiting for it okay okay thank you No luck. Oh yeah, that's worth. Hey, 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 Jem, you you were in which breakout room? I think you lost connection. I think we should bring everybody back soon. Yes. Because yes. we need to progress. Thank you.
We all are back to the main session. Uh, oh, good. Okay. Komal now. Wonderful. Thank you. That's terrific. Thank you. So, welcome back. How many? Hi, hey, hey, hello, Lucy. Uh, how many groups did we get finally? We we had four groups. Wonderful. So, um, are we, do we have everybody back now with us? Yes. Excellent. Great. Well, a big warm welcome back to everyone. And we, we um, I hope that you could get some of your thinking started on this very important subject about what we can do. What are some of the solutions and actions that we can implement to address the issue of climate change, particularly issues relevant to our specific geographies and regions in Nigeria. So let's go with group number one. Um, and we spend, a, a, you know, two minutes or so just talking about what the issues are and what some of the actions are. This is only the first step. So I'm not trying to say that you should have a final plan, but um, definitely some important ideas will uh, count to get us started. So group number one, uh, whoever wants to go from group number one, we welcome you to share what the outcomes of your discussion were, please. Yes, we uh, have Anthony, I think so. Anthony, please. Anthony, thank you. Yeah, Anthony here. Who from group number one is going to go, Sam? Yeah, Rafael. Right. I am. Hello. Okay, Rafael. Take yes. It. Hey. Yes, Rafael. Good. Rafael. Rafael. Let me see. Rafael. Yeah. Please. So. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, on that, on that day. On that thirdly, people have always been aware of uh, climatic uh, variations as the relevant short and uh, time scales of the uh, season, years, and decades. Even biblical inscription uh, and other healthy documents refer to droughts, floods, period of uh, several cold and um, other climatic events. Nonetheless, a few appreciation of the natural and magnitude of, uh, of the nature of the nature and magnitude of the climate actions or climate change did not come about until the late uh, 18th and early 19th century, time when the widespread uh, uh, recognition of the deep antiquity of Earth of God. So, sorry, sorry, Raphael, Raphael, um, sorry um, Raphael, we, we just discussed the local problems we talked about on the group and then solutions thereof, not basically giving them an etymological background. We we'll also come yeah. to that, but just the, the problems we talked about and the yeah. solutions we spoke about on the group, please. Thank you. So save time, please. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Uh, in, in our platform, in our group, we talked about uh, uh, droughts, we talked about uh, um, um, uh, emotions, we talked about um, 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 this, um, we we'll talk about um, rainfall, erosions, um, emissions, and we we'll talk about um, this um, over in the north, whereby there's no rainfall at all, that's drought. Then uh, we we'll talk about um, in our own region, whereby the aquatic life are affected as a result of oil spillage, whereby uh, there's, uh, enough, uh, there's no enough uh, uh, aquarium, like there's no enough uh, what of uh, volume for the aquatic life to, to live. And also we discussed about uh, uh, as a result of heavy rainfall, whereby uh, some houses are being uh, have been affected, whereby no yeah. place, no, no place for, for for shelter. Then we talked about uh, this uh, cattle, cattle ranching, if there will be a, a, a possible solution to that, whereby 
the, 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 the cattle are being uh, quarantined or are being secluded from, uh, from the activities over in the farmland where the farmers are because uh, they have the, the enhancement over here is uh, causing a lot of problem whereby the young farmers are not able to go to farm to farm and, and this is, is as a result of uh, a climate action a climate change so it's it's something that we we discuss about and uh, the possible solution is number one the, there should be a review in the in the government policy like uh, mm -hmm. they should announce uh, announce uh, laws restricting laws from um, uh, and this uh, estimate whereby they, they have to to be well organized in terms of uh, their feeding ration uh, a system or operation and also whereby the the, the use of uh, emotions uh, 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 equipment or maybe machines should be converted. Then uh, also we looked at uh, whereby we can go artificial, like uh, encouraging an uh, irrigation system to in the areas whereby there are uh, uh, droughts. So that will also, also assist and also uh, uh, encourage the farmers over there. Then also we should kick against the idea of deforestation. Whereby, mm. even if there is there's there's deforestation, but there should be afforestation or regeneration of uh, the deforest areas. So, those are the, the, the areas that we were still discussing, and there are a lot. Then, the oil spillage okay. aspect. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Raphael. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, just, to, just to add, uh, just to wrap up with just a um, few, yeah. just 10 sec 20 seconds yeah. of. 30 seconds and we, we we spoke about um low rainfall air pollution yeah. so like um, in in the southwest they're having a whole lot of um, flooding issues oil spillage and then um, in west they, they, they are having um some issues that has to do with um, um indiscriminate waste disposal in um, canals and then um, in um, waterways so so most of the action plans we concluded that um, first of all, for the rainfall, is that a lot of work happened to the government, which has brought about low rainfall, giving rise um, to, yeah. to low farm produce, which basically we have to handle. Um, yeah. Basically, praying to God for rain because we, can, we cannot bring rain down on our own making. Yeah. So, um, for, for, for the air pollution and flooding, we, okay, for, for the we disposal in canals. And someone talked about an action plan whereby the government have to draw out plans on building plans on these areas, especially houses that are built on um, these slums. So there should be a well constructed and plan in regards to that. And also there should be more advocacy to the government in regards to those places. And then for the area of um, flooding and um, air pollution, which is um, in um, South South, they, we, we, we talked about um, educating the people more on these issues in terms of um, disposing their waste and also in terms of burning waste outside their homes and also bringing to the knowledge of the government about the oil spillage caused by factories and industries, which they are really aware of because they are not, they are the people that brought in these companies into, into mm. being. So it's, it, it deals more with um, advocacy, okay? It deals more with advocacy and then um, carrying out them so, um, a peaceful strike in these areas to get things done rightly. Thank you. That's terrific. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Rafael, Sam, both of you, uh, for for sharing both the issues and possible solutions, uh, and uh, clearly amplifying our voices, engaging with the government. You know, being uh, able to advocate and advocate in a powerful. Uh, in the most powerful mechanisms, using the most powerful mechanisms and methods would be would be essential to be to be able to address the issues at hand. So thank you for sharing those. I'm going to ask group number two uh, if you could share number one your issues and also the actions that you can take as youth leaders, uh, and to uh, share them in, a, in two minutes, please. Thank you. Group group number two. Uh, Hello. Whoever is going to go from the second group, please. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, Yahaya. 
प्लीज या 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 प्लीज ओप्स इट्स कैन ऑफ ब्रेकिंग सॉरी maybe he is battling with a network can, um, can network you hear me that's right uh yeah i think we can now okay maybe maybe we'll move on to unless somebody else wants to share otherwise we go on to group number 3 and then we come back to group can, can you hear me now yeah yeah we can yes please continue yeah yeah I think he lost connection. Anybody else from group two? Okay. And Bukal, Bukola. Bukola, would you like to go? Bukola, please. Mr. Andrew Roke, can you deliver for group number two? Excellent. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you, Mr. Andrew. All right. Um, the group. Okay. All right. Uh, group number two identified uh, some certain uh, issues causing climate uh, change in Nigeria to include flooding, and to also include certain human activities such as um, agricultural activities and uh, um, industrial activities like oil pollution and um, and others such as uh, deforestation. So, but mm -hmm. most importantly, the group were able to, you know, uh, discuss on possible ways of uh, adapting and mitigating this, which uh, we include, which includes, uh, first of all, the commitment uh, of government to tackling the issue at hand. Uh, we, the group, uh, opined that uh, government should be more committed uh, on implementing uh, already existing poli policies and possibly reinforcing the ones that are weak. So that it could address uh, this problem. Then another uh, important point raised by Group Two is that we suggested that there should be a kind of an interconnected uh, approach that will involve the local people from the community level, the local government, the states, and the federal level, because the issue of climate change we are talking about here is a general issue, and uh, if you look at it. In one way to the other, everybody contributes, you know, to causing this climate change. Range starting from the way you, you know, for those who that uh, the local farmers, the way they do their their agriculture, the way they, you know, uh, they, they clear their their farms, leading to loss in biodiversity, the way they cut down trees, and uh, to the industries too. For instance, in uh, in the Niger Delta area of Nigeria, where there is oil pollution and you know release of um, of uh, greenhouse gases, these fossil fuels contribute uh, heavily to uh, climate change. In addition to the north, uh, northern area where there is a uh, uh, um, headers, you know, um, using the agriculture, farmland, grassland, and feeding much on the grass, including the water. So we 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 look at it that government have a serious uh, role to play on creating awareness first of all. People should be aware that there's climate change. So they should try to create a much awareness. Then they should bring an approach, a policy that could integrate the federal, the states, the local, and carry everybody along to ensure that uh, um, um, the climate is mitigated. And also bring a, 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 if there's a way they can, you know, bring a kind of a, um, incentive to organizations that are, you know, that are all like a task really to organizations that are, you know, um, encouraging uh, uh, mitigative measures. Uh, for instance, now let's talk about a law where there is environmental impact assessment. You know, you have to, for instance, if you want to uh, do some, uh, carry out some uh, construction or you want to do is not uh, uh, heavily affect the environment. But then you look at right. it that uh, most of these things are being politicized. So in the summary of what we said, there should be more commitment yeah. and there should be an interconnected approach. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Andrew. That's excellent. And, and I think you and group number one both underscored uh, also the role of education and building awareness about these issues.
uh, which is critical because we all have to play a part in, and you highlighted that in the fact that we need to coordinate our efforts. Uh, also, I wanna say that, you know, it's really important that we do have the government intervention in a way that we can address policies. And it's very important that as young people, we are clear about what these policies are about and the kind of change we're requesting uh, and, and demanding. So uh, well done uh, for uh, sharing that and, and for the important discussion you've had. I, I thank you, Andrew, I appreciate it. And I also wanna now invite group number three, group number three, if you can talk about the issues and the solutions, more importantly, the action that you can take as youth and uh, in two minutes, please, no more than that. We've got uh, very little time before we move on to the next activity. So I do wanna make sure the last group gets a chance as well. So thank you, Andrew and Sam and Raphael and moving on to group number three now, please. Who wants to go in uh, uh, group number three? Okay, hello. Yeah, hi Lucy, please. Okay, so um, I went offline, I don't know what's um, they actually said the first time. But the solution we talked about was, um, for, for instance, we need to start from reorientation, um, going back to the masses to educate them, sensitize them, because trust me, they are not aware of the problem. When we talk about improper waste disposal and waste management, because they don't know that these things are wrong, they do it like it's a norm. So we need to go back and reorientate them teach them that these things you guys are doing are wrong. And in inclusion, like involve them in the results because I believe different um, localities have different solution approach. So if we involve them in providing a solution to the problem discovered in their environment, that um, solution will last longer because they will see it like a together effort, not just we come with our idea to give to them. We're going to impute their own idea my own idea and everybody's idea to form a solution that will last. So in talking about what we can do in, as we got the, the issues found in these areas we, we my group looked at, one thing I we talked about was to get everybody involved in preferring a solution. Then aside that, aside the, um, what do you call it? The, the re-awareness and the reorientation of the people, we got to involve the government because it's not just a one party thing. The community, the host community, the government, and we, the social workers, or rather the agents of change needs to be involved to do these things. So I believe if these three things are involved in preferring solutions, we'll have long lasting solutions, not just solutions. So even if we are not there, those people, the community people involved in, in preferring the solution will have way forward and we'll also know how to teach the other people coming behind us what we can do. Excellent. So, Excellent. That's such a key point. Please, Lucy. Okay. So yeah. I don't know if any of my group members want to chip in something else, but for me, I think we need to start from there. Once we get this thing right, every other thing can fall into place. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's wonderful. Was anybody else wanting to add anything from group number three? Okay, well, I just wanted to say, Lucy, that was a powerful, powerful discussion, it seems, and, and I totally agree with you that a lot of people still do things because they don't even have realization of the fact that it's got environmental impacts and that creating awareness and mobilizing communities uh, and, and understanding that their partaking in the solutions is a critical, critical, critical first step. And, uh, and actually, that's what I foresee as the role that youth leaders like yourselves will play in terms of mobilizing action on the ground and also mobilizing communities as you get out in the field and start doing what you're doing. So I just want to say thank you very much for that very, very fruitful discussion and the key points you just shared with us. And with that, I'm going to invite group number four now. Uh, if you could share what you thought were the key actions and solutions to address the issues at hand. Um, and uh, if you could do that in two minutes, I'd be very grateful. Thank you once again, Lucy. Group number Paul, four. Please go ahead, Paul. Your mic is closed. Okay, good day everyone. Good day. Um, basically in group number four, we talked about um, peculiarities of environmental activities in our localities. Oh, I, I, I am from the out of Nigeria, I talked about the um, suits in the air due to crude oil exploration and production activities. 
So in the southern part of Nigeria, especially in Port Harcourt, the city of Port Harcourt, you discover um, soot-like um, particles in the air. These are a lot of illegal bunkering activities. So the government um, officials, they, they seize the, the products of these illegal um, oil explorers and then they burn them indiscriminately, thereby releasing these soot-like substances that are very harmful into the atmosphere. So you can see them, or you can see droplets of them on your cars, um, on the soles of your feet, almost everywhere. This is an environmental hazard. Then um, Onyedika from the East, he talked about um, in, indiscriminate use of um, plastics, um, plastic drink, plastic food, and the disposal. The, the people do not know how to recycle plastic and almost all dunks and consumables around the eastern parts of Nigeria now come in this um, plastic containers. So you see them littered um, almost everywhere. Although I had a network glitch when Olua Tony was talking about environmental activities in the western part of the country. So when I returned, I also talked about how um, in, the, in the southern part of Nigeria, people, people try as much as they can to dispose their waste discriminately. But this effort is truncated by scavengers who go to dump sites to like um, scatter this waste and litter the roads and drainages all in the name of looking for recyclable items. And the government isn't um, doing anything about them. Although um, Olua Tony from the West, she was talking about educating people about um, flooding because another um, colleague of mine who was from the east talked about the flooding in a, a part of the country, in the eastern part of the country, somewhere in Anambra State. He said um, the, this flooding happens occasionally, but most people are not really prepared for it. So I think um, educating, educating, and we orient, orient, giving people that orientation about how to prepare for floods would be a way to um, curb this environmental menace. Also, um, the government have to do um, an environmental assessment how this suit affects the health of people in the southern part of the country. Yeah. I think this is a wrap. I do not know if Onyedika would have any other thing to contribute to this, but basically this, this is what we had um, in group four. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. That's, that's very, very helpful. And does anybody yeah. else in group number four want to add anything? Okay. Okay, well, I think Paul, you underscored, uh, you know, the implications and the connections between environmental and health issues. And of course, uh, the issue of waste and plastic, which is definitely a very big one. And also how that then further exacerbates the issue uh, that, that uh, you know, we're facing as communities, because, you know, plastic and waste typically blocks all of our sewage systems. And then, you know, there's microplastics that go into uh, you know, waterways, and then we're consuming them, but also we have, we have flooding as a consequence of this. So I think these are, these are all really, really pertinent issues. And I'm going to ask everybody, first of all, I want to congratulate everybody because you've in a few minutes brainstormed about a, a lot of important issues and you've covered really the a range of issues that are probably the most important in each of your respective uh, geographies, but also, uh, uh, the fact that, you know, you in your minds know that um, I've heard you say that, number one, uh, mobilizing communities, building awareness, creating education, uh, organizing ourselves as, as youth uh, being important, uh, uh, you know, uh, let me say, um, important, uh, you know, channels to affect change and being agents of change. And then finally, also being able to amplify our voices in order to be able to address issues at a policy level and programming level with the engagement of government is very critical. Uh, and I'm going to, first of all, congratulate you for the effort and for coming together today and starting this important thinking, but also for taking forward the action that's needed in order to be able to address these issues. And I wanna to say today's a very important day from that standpoint, because it's about being able to formally start this process and, it, and, and strengthen the efforts that all of you I know are already undertaking on the ground. So, um, you know, let's just keep taking this 
this effort forward. And I want to congratulate you for doing this. I want to say that let's continue to find that action and then make it happen. Uh, and we'll work together to make it happen, no doubt. But what my vision uh, for you, and I know that you have this, and also the Honorable Minister, shared would be that uh, you know we are able to do this together for a better Nigeria and also be able to put um, Africa on a global map and as a model for people to learn from and and the fact that there is power in youth and that we can do it if we come together so I just want to say a big congratulations to everybody and uh, with that uh, I want to say that you know, today's the start of their, the rest of our life. So let's make this happen. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna say uh, over to Sam and then on to Vanessa. I know Vanessa is gonna conduct a, a small uh, but important activity with us today. Uh, and I just wanna say what a pleasure and honor it is to come together with you as family. And I know we can make this happen. Uh, Dr. Norma, if there was anything you wanted to say before we close and then we hand over for the next session. So well done everybody. Dr. Thank you so much. The only thing that I wanted to say is that we need to move forward and we will be together with you to help you and to, to give everything what you need to go further. Thank you so much. Okay, so thank you very, very much for the wonderful moderation and conduction of this section and Dr. Ash and then Dr. Noma is really is an honor to have you both among us today. And then um, just to mention that um, Dr. Ash has been a major influence in my life. Okay, like I've known him for over three years now or more. He has been a major influence. At times I just want to give up, you know, like, like the encouragement to boost me up. <laughs> it makes me not even think of giving up. I know how many times I feel like giving up sincerely. I know how many times, like countless number of times he's been a major influence in my life. A big one. So thank you, Dr. Ash. And then also Thank you, Sam. You know, I have all the faith in the world in you and, and love you. you so dearly. So uh, I'm so thank proud you. of you. God bless you. And thank also, you. Dr. Noma, I also celebrate her. She's a go-getter, like she's this energetic person that makes you don't want to lose hope for anything. Even though you don't see the hope coming, she keeps saying that it's gonna work. <laughs> and that's really awesome. So thank you, Dr. Noma. And then over to Vanessa. She's gonna conduct a few sections with us on um, this building. It's gonna be an interactive section, very, very interactive. And then um, I would just like to introduce them, Vanessa. Vanessa is also a pop youth mentor. And um, she has been with the pop movement for a while now. And she has really been doing a whole lot of amazing things. And Vanessa is passionate about protecting our planet and has committed herself to prevent, to preserving the environment through every possible way in which she can contribute. Okay, and then she just completed a bachelor degree in pharmatical, pharmatical chemistry and biology at University of Guadalajara, Guadalajara Chemist and Mexico. And then, she joined the pop movement and to lend her knowledge and skills as an ecologist to the youth of the world. She is very grateful to her teachers for supporting and complementing her interest in protecting our planet. Vanessa is an outstanding student in both academics and extracurricular, who has enjoyed participating in presentations and exhibitions on the environment and climate change. And as a member of the pop team in Mexico, she now enjoys giving. She now enjoys giving presentations and contributions. Presentations and contributing carbon emission reduction activities for her of her own. As a research intern, Vanessa is currently also working on finding alternative methods to production of biofuels. She believes that we, the humans, while being the greatest source of climate change are also the greatest and only solution and that all of us must unite and start working as a team to achieve positive results. Vanessa is fluent in English, Spanish, and also knows the French language. She wishes to reach out to the young speakers of these tongues with message of climate action, deploying and sharing her own leadership skills, perseverance and sense of responsibility, personal motivation, integrity, and commitment for better a sustainable future. 
So Vanessa, here you go. Well, thank you so much, Sam. Um, thank you for giving me the honor to be here with all of you. I'm really grateful. And um, today we are going to conduct an interactive session before we go to the next session of the, the, set, the great session that we're having today. So um, just to wake up and to, to make this a little bit more fun. <laughs> so because I know that right now all of us are a little bit tired um, because we're having this, um, this discussion. We are going to um, have a dance. Right now, I am going to share the noise with all of you. But before that, I'm going to give um, you the steps that we are going to follow. <laughs> so if it's possible, all of you can turn on your cameras. If not, it, then don't worry. But if it's possible, let's turn our cameras on and, and start doing the steps that I'm going to share with you. <laughs> Okay, so just let me know whenever everybody is ready. It looks like um, some of us are ready. So the first step, it's only with our head. So the first step is just follow however I'm going to do it. The first step is one, two, three, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Did you learn it? Or should I repeat it? <laughs> repeat it, please. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Great. So the first step is like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. OK. We repeat number three. We do three, two times. OK. One more time, and then I'm going to share the music so we can do it together. So the first one, two, three, three, four, five, six. <laughs> okay, so let's try it. I'm going to share my sound of the computer. Just give me a second. Great. Are you ready? Yes? Okay. So let's start. If you would have read your syllabus, no, you would have known that. Step to the B, 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 step to the B. Wait. What are y'all doing with your heads? Should we do it again? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Let's do it again. One more time. <laughs> if you would have read your syllabus, no, you would no, have known. Step to the B. 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 Wait. What are y'all doing with your heads? <laughs> do you need another time so we can just wake up? One last time? Great. <laughs> so, if you would have read go. your syllabus, no, you would have known. Step to the B, 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 step to the B. Wait, <laughs> what are y'all doing with your heads? Dancing. Hey. <laughs> I hope this dance um, give you a a good time and time to relax so we can continue to the next peace building session. <laughs> Great. So um, I think now we are going to breakout rooms where we need to resolve um, two main questions. We are going to also share these two questions on the chat. Before that, I'm going to read them. The first one is, what do you think how small states or regions can contribute towards taking action to peace building? And the second one is, how can peace be created and sustained amidst climate change? So um, I think now Komal and Risha are going to split up in breakout rooms. So we can start working in, two quest in these two questions. And then we're going to come back in the main session and share what we discussed. 
Okay. Thank you. Uh, Lord Kamal, do you want to add something, Prisha? Please. No, uh, I'm, I'm just saying that you will get a joining uh, request. Please join the breakout rooms. And the questions are in the chat. We have seven minutes in the breakout room and then we'll come back in the main session for the discussion. Yeah, hi, uh, um, Dixon, Akubize, you guys must have got a request to join the breakout room. Can you click on that? Can you click on join? Obasi, please see if you have uh, got the request to join a breakout room. Trisha, can I share my screen now? I cannot see your screen. Can you see now? The fact that if we don't stop what we have been doing in the past, if we don't mitigate, if we don't mitigate the emissions of greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide in particular, we will have some very serious consequences and impacts of climate change. What would these be? Well, firstly, we will get heat waves. You've seen the extreme heat wave that took place in Europe just this year and also parts of North America. We will have extreme precipitation events, which means you'll have flooding, you'll have mudslides, you will have excess of rain, and absolute damage when it comes to human life and property. I also want to highlight the fact that there will be sea level rise related extreme events. And if you look at various parts of the world, there will be water shortages, there will be droughts. And can you imagine if we are going to get um, a whole large increase in population of the world, let's say to 10 or 10.5, billion by the middle of this century, where will we get the food to feed all those mouths? And for that, we also need some major lifestyle changes, including changes in diet. And that I'll come to in a very short while. But what I would like to highlight is that in the schools, institutions of various kinds, colleges, universities, that can be the center of action. Because not only will this give you a basis for believing in yourself, but also making sure that you're able to carry out advocacy with leaders. Just think of the fact that there are 1. Point, there are 1.8 billion youth between the ages of 11 and 24. And if they were to really get down to action, if they were to create models of institutions everywhere, then clearly that would have a major impact all over the world. So, what I want to request you to do is to see that you get involved with the pop movement, you make sure that you cut down on emissions of carbon dioxide, reduce your own carbon footprint, and make sure that there is very little waste in human activities. I mean, as you're aware, it's been projected that by 2050, there'll be more plastic in the oceans 
than fish. And there will also be a major loss of biodiversity. If that happens, there's going to be disease, there are going to be health problems, there will also be major impacts on food supply. So I want to appeal to you, I want to request you, and I join you in making sure that the pop movement does exactly what Mahatma Gandhi has said, be the change you want to see in the world. So I want all of you to be the change that you want to see in this whole world and you will then have a wonderful time, you will then have a future that is sustainable, a future that is safe and that is secure. So muchas gracias, thank you very much and I look forward to working with you in the future. Everybody is back from the breakout room. I hope that much time was sufficient. Can we start with the presentation of everybody group-wise? Yes, yes, yes. Um, and um, also, we can just be brief about that because we have um, the next section, which is in section two, coming up immediately after now. So we could just be fast for the presenters. Okay. So it was um, enough time. Should we start discussing? That's okay? Yes, 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 yes. Let's start discussing. Okay. Great. <laughs> so the, I think everybody is back. So thank you so much um, for taking this time discussing these two really important questions that because we know that you're already taking climate leadership in your communities. And we know and believe that we need to create peace while we are taking climate action. So now we would like to ask someone from group number one, if you can share with us in one minute, the main points that was discussed in your breakout rooms, please. Good or Sandra, you can, you can talk please. <laughs> Gola, Sandra, you say I. <laughs> Who's ready to share what was discussed in breakout room one? Sandra, can you speak? Yes, Sandra. Sandra? Activist Sandra? Sorry if I'm. I think that they are very shy. 
<laughs> I don't know. They speak very well both. Bukola. Hola. Uh, I don't think they are closed, so we can just move on to the next to the next group. Okay. Oh. So um, meanwhile we wait for group one. Can we have group two to present their conclusion, please? Sam, who all were yes, there yes, in the yes. breakout room? Can you please ask them to present? Please group two. Um Dixon. I think we have um, Dixon, we had um, Shudu maybe. We have Shudu maybe, and I myself with um, one other person again. Dixon, so are you? you like Dixon, Shudu maybe, is anyone there? I could just do that. So in, in group two, we, we, we talked about. Um, issues that that's first raised before getting to peace building so we discussed them um, about involvement of everybody especially the grassroots to promote peace in the environment so it has to do with them starting from the bottom to the top and also seeing how they it can also come back to the bottom as well like more like a um, bottom to top kind of approach than top to bottom kind of approach. We are, everybody is involved in the process of um, negotiating peace for not just themselves or their community, but also for the environment. So someone was talking about issues of um, headsmen and their clashes and all that, which basically emanates from the, cra from the grassroots. So they were like, if people can be sensitized about the essence of living together and also the essence of understanding that most of this immigration of um, headsmen has been as a result of some climatic factor. Someone gave an instance of people who live in the north because of um, famine, which give rise to poverty. And since there is poverty, people from the north ends up migrating their cattle to the south because of because the south is a tropical area. So the migration as well gives rise to conflicts causing clashes and all that so they were talking about people at the grassroots understanding the effect of climate change on this region and also coming together as well to have a, a conclusive negotiation among both parties in order to promote peace as they move and also as um, they carry their activities in these areas. So that is basically what they discussed about. Yeah, um, I totally agree with you, Sam. I think um, Advayo Samuel, he's um, raising his hand. Would you like to take the word? Okay, Samuel, Samuel. Please, Samuel. Please, please, please. I think you can open your microphone if you're ready, Adibayu. Adibayu, you can unmute yourself if you're ready. All right, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I don't know, it's maybe noisy here, I'm on the bus, so I'm trying to like be part of the class, that's why. Okay, well done, All right, thank so you. for me, um, here in home state, this is um, Congo part, I see. And then um, the change management area is improper way of people disposing their waste. Um, for me, I would say the government in Ogun State is not really doing their best, really, on the aspect of disposal of waste. People, the way people dispose their waste is really, really uh, bad, which most times causes pollution and causes a lot of um, bad. Um, hazards to our health and all that. So that's why, it's, and most of them also, they are, they, they are part of um, burning their waste. So like most times, because there's no proper way of which people can dispose it, they keep burning it, and which is also causing the climate change, causing a lot of pollution and all that. So I came up with, what of if one, if we can come up with an advocacy, like reaching out to different people. And uh, um, last year, I went to my community and I spoke to them. 
the other issue um, that we're going to bring waste management to the area. So when we started the protest, most of them were complaining about the bad uh, road, that the road is very bad, which the compactors and these uh, people can come over to the area. Now, it's part of the issue that we are having that. Now, the, compact, the waste management people are willing to come, but the roads are bad. So how do we intend having a good... Um, a good, uh, pro a proper way of them disposing their waste. So I thought of one, if we can come up with a advocacy, like reaching out to different people, telling them why they should do this. Because most of them, they're like, uh, instead of me uh, waiting for those people to come, I'll just put it to one side and burn it. Is is going to cost me nothing and all that, and which is really bad. And I thought of we providing a designated place, maybe like having a trash And because there's nowhere it's designated for them to like, oh, this is place you have to drop your refuge. Every one of them just drop it anywhere, and it's causing a lot of pollution everywhere. So I thought if we could provide trash cans or like a, a waste bin for them, where they could pour their waste there, and it's can, uh, when the when the due time is, the waste management people can come over and pack the dead. So those are the issue that I can see in some water, which is really causing um, climate change and bad environmental pollution. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deva, for sharing. And thank you for, for sharing this um, thoughts and knowledge that you have faced and have seen in your community. Now, I think we have only one minute for someone else to share, the last person. I think I could be see Sandra was um, ready to share. I don't know if you want to share something. Yeah, can I speak? I'm here. Yes, please, the word is yours. Okay, I think um, the problem we're having in this country, especially down here in my states, in my area, I stay in Anambra states, and um, the government is not doing anything to help the the climate I think, change. I think we're having... Um, what I, what I mean is that creates places to dump every other thing. Can you help me, please? Yeah, we can hear can you. you hear me, guys? a little bit. Maybe if you turn on, um, off your camera, now the network can work better. Hello? Okay. Yeah, do you Thank hear you. us? We can hear you, um, but it's cutting a little bit. If you Is turn it clear the now? camera. Yes, 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 Sandra, please go on. Sandra, go on. It's clear. Okay, Vanessa, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. And I think um, the best thing for us to do, like I said in the group A uh, discussion, I think the best to sit down with these people like the grassroots, because when it comes to climate change, when it comes to climate change and its significance, we fall directly under the ministries and especially the Ministry of Environment. They close all the hooks and the kernels of the states. So my suggestion is just, maybe we should sit all of us, the main people in this, this circle, the climate uh, action group, the, the chain, we as a chain needs to sit with these people, with the government, with the Ministry of Environment to create an avenue to dialogue on how to go about the pollution of the states. Because you go around all the states, all the states are being polluted. And when you get to where they are being dumped, it, it's harmful to people's health. It's really harmful to people's health, especially the plastics. It, it doesn't um, um, show anything cleanliness. But then when we sit down with the environment and the government, the state government, we need to sit and dialogue how to put a stop to that. If there is any place when we need to be dumping them at spiral time, they not just to dump them and forget they're there. Because the issue we have here is who is going to speak. Nobody has the courage to speak. 
yeah, they are practicing um, uh, government of the people or whatever uh, uh, um, democratic party. But yes, in this, nobody can speak because when you speak, nobody is ready to listen. And even anybody is there to listen, how are they going to be implemented? So I seek for, I solicit for you people's help to help us at least get to the root of this whole thing, put a stop to some things by sitting together with these people dialoguing on how to put a stop to this whole pollution because it's becoming uh, hazardous. It's becoming harmful to people's health, especially. I think that's all I have to say for now. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for this message. And we totally agree with you. And thank you for sharing these thoughts. Um, right now, I think we don't have more time for more um, sharing. Koma, could you please confirm? Do you have more time so we can give the word to anybody else? Anyone else? I think the Phil wants to say something. Yeah. Okay. Great. Please, Rafael, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I, in fact, uh, I'm, I'm very grateful and uh, I'm very happy again. So looking at it, uh, what Sarah, uh, Sandra said, it's the basic, uh, the basic facts over here in Africa and Nigeria, because we are here and we know what uh, our people, who they are. So basically uh, we lack enabling environments, like it's something that uh, it's, 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 gonna take, it's gonna take time. Like over in US, over in America, over there in, in London, over this have started long ago. Because I could, uh, there's a novel I was reading, and when I look at some policies and some uh, some uh, 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 kind of some information that we are enacted to like to to reduce zero poverty, uh, uh, reduce poverty to the zero to the very minimum. So this has started long ago, and we are just starting our own now. So you see, we still have a long way to go. If the government can synergize, can partner with the uh, uh, community, like the community where these problems are, I think we'll achieve our aims and objective because uh, we cannot be advocating or advocating, or we cannot be an advocate without the presence of uh, the, 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 the practitioners, like maybe the government officials who are willing and ready to support. Because if we fail to understand that fact, we may just be advocating and then some persons will not want to act. So and we are doing this in the context of, of, of helping the society and helping the nation. So I think it is, it is better to the government to provide this idea there's two factors that I want to point out. There are two takeaway messages for us assessment in at supporting interventions. Like number one, in the locality where I am, I'm, look, I'm, I'm, I'm using agriculture as a case study. Like farmers in venerable community are risk adverse in regards to agricultural innovation, and we'll be reluctant to implement it, implement suggested change that require relatively high set of investment. So this is a problem. So I know that this is especially, this is especially the case when the, the suggested innovator or innovation are not aimed at reward that the farmers, that the farmers themselves value. And two, the farmers can have quite different view regarding what are the most important risks and most worthwhile rewards relative to research or policies developers. Yeah. You understand? So assessment must therefore address how members of venerable communities themselves perceive risks and, and, uh, and identify rewards. So if, if this is not done, okay. it's unlikely yes. that farmers will adopt purpose, purpose interventions and stuff like that. So, so that that's that, so basically there are a lot of a lot of things to be looked. A, a second contextual factor is uh, related to 
You won. Okay, 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 because okay. Raphael, Raphael, so, Raphael, please. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank All right. you. All right. So, Vanessa, that to you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Divayo, Sandra, and Raphael, for sharing this really, really strong messages and had the courage to share your thoughts about these questions. And in order for us to start thinking and taking climate action together, first we need to think about peace to work on creating peace in our surroundings. It's highly important for us like leaders to think on these questions because we cannot think in changing the world and have peace without having peace ourselves. So an advice that I would like just to close right now and pass the word to Dr. Ash is to give us a treat each other as a family take care of our co-workers, our partners, and create, create sustainable partnerships so we can work on climate action. Thank you once again, Sandra, Divide, and Rafael for sharing um, these really strong messages. And I would like to pass the word to Dr. Ash so he can um, give us some closing comments. Please, Dr. Ash, the floor is yours. Sure, thank you, Vanessa. And the entire family, I just wanted to say that Again, um, this is a very critical juncture we're all at. We have, a, we have a window of opportunity. And I think the important thing is we're all together here today. And we also know that this is the start of something much bigger. Let's definitely join hands. Let's keep that fire and passion going. And very importantly, let's reach out to our communities to be able to work together and protect our planet. And it is going to take each one of us to do that. Um, I just want to say also that you can count on our support every step of the way. And um, I know each one of us over here has, has the flame, has the spark, and has the leadership. So just continue to tap into it. Believe in yourself. Believe in the fact that we can build our future together and that this is an important step in that direction. So I just want to say a big thank you to all of you. Thank you, Vanessa, for a very insightful session. And thank you all for your voices and very importantly, your action. And we're looking forward to the start of many great things together. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Ash. And then thank you to the Pop family for that um, wonderful presentation for section one of today. And then we'll be wrapping up soon. We just have um, three sections to go and it's very brief moment of time. So first of all, I want to thank all the partners of this um, project. We have um, Global SA, we have um, ICCDI, we have the SEM, we have Action GX, we have World Merit, we have PIGD, and we have the Harvards. And this project is then supported by the Federal Ministry of Environment, Nigeria. So it's really awesome. And then um, one thing about this project is that this is just the beginning of the phase. And then the next phase will be the on-site process whereby we will engage every one of you physically in your respective states. Okay. So for our next section, our next section, we will have um, we will have um, Mrs. Um, Bukola Chegede. Okay. And then um, Bukola. Ola Jegede is a mentor to many young Nigerians in the nonprofit sector, professionally and in life general. She is country president. She is country council president of World Merit Nigeria. Of World Merit Nigeria, we are members run advocacy and projects towards the uh, towards the UN SDGs. Project lead for Project Safe School. She helps people define, follow up, and achieve their set goals and objective. She has written a book to foster this. Bukola is an adventurous learner and skill development evangelist. She stumbled into the world of STEM and she loves and she and she is loving every bit in it. She is currently overseeing a project called Merit Ed, Merit ED Nigeria. We are She's training girls in Northern Nigeria, in Northern Nigeria to learn programming and social media marketing for them to be relevant in fourth industrial revolution. Co-founder of Camp of Camp Africa, a health tech company that aims to bridge the gap between healthcare service and users and healthcare providers. She is lead strategist and founder of Mommy Tech, a tech community to encourage stay-at-home moms and 
moms and mom to embrace tech and see how their set skills can be tailored towards tech solutions. Bukola is a world plus digital ambassador and also a judge for tech innovation. She is a wife and a mom of two girls. So Bukola, we are grateful to have you here with us. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Samuel. Thank you so much, Dr. Ha Ash. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Normal. And thank you so much, everyone, as well, for having me. I've been enjoying myself throughout the session. And Vanessa, thank you so much for that session. It was an amazing session. You, you made us shake our bodies, even though I didn't on my video. Thank you so much. It's been amazing. Yeah, really. I would love to share my... Um, um, I don't know. I want to share some slides, and um, I don't know if I could be given yeah. Drisha, the privilege to do that. Drisha, can you share screen with Vanessa? Can you enable her? Maybe make her. Drisha, is that possible? Yeah. Okay, please. Thank you. Um, who wants to share the screen? Um, Bukola. Bukola. Okay. Okay, Bukola. Yeah. yeah, can you okay. try? Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Austin. I'll just, okay, so. Sorry, I just need some. I need some. Just some seconds, I will just. Sorry for the delay, I'm trying to connect it so that I can. Okay. Okay. Or maybe I can share it with someone yet. I'm I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm just seeing how I can. I really don't know. I don't I don't intend delaying every one of us. Okay, I would okay. probably save save it to my Google Drive and see if I can move it from there because I think that's one option. Okay. Okay, so sorry for that. So I'm so sorry. Okay, so while we wait, I wait for my slide. I will just pick it up from there. If you can send it to Drisha on WhatsApp. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. So that okay. she will help you share it. Okay. On WhatsApp, right? Yes. 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 I'll just, uh, can I just send it to the pop WhatsApp group, like share yes, it there? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Pop up I'll do that now. I'm doing, okay. Sure. So, uh, okay. Sure. Thank you. Okay. I'm trying to do that okay. while I save it. Okay, so I'll I just Okay, thank you. I was so I'm going to be talking on. Um, I know that this is a train the trainer session, and the yes. the sole reason is for every one of us to be equipped so that we could also train people as regards this subject. So I'm sure the conflicts as it is is something every one of us is familiar with. And my first slide, I know Vanessa hasn't gotten it. Says. Um, I'm sure every one of us has had one experience of conflict one way or the other. Like I'm sure we have, if we have, can I just see some of the comment session in some of the, some of it on the chat session. I know it's a virtual workshop, but I will try as much as I can to make it quite interactive. 
so that um, I won't be the only one here feeling like I'm talking to myself. So I would appreciate that as well. I'm trying to send it once I get that. Okay, now once it drops, I would let Vanessa know. Um, is it Vanessa or? Okay, just, no you can just drop it on the chat yeah. then. You can just pick it up and okay, so I've dropped it. So, like I was saying, I'm sure every one of us has had one experience or the other as regards conflicts. So it has. I've sent it, but I don't think um, it's opening there yet. Has it? Has it? Has it gone? Yeah. Has it gone? Yes. Have, has any? Have, have we seen it? Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. It's yes. Okay. So, like I said, uh, who in this room has experienced conflicts? Do we have anyone who has not experienced conflicts one way or the other? How how would you have liked to handle those conflicts differently at some times? When you sit back and reflect on the way you handled those conflicts, do you think you would have handled it way better than the way you handled it previously? I'm, I'm, I'm going to the comment session now, the chat session to actually see, okay, I have, my network is breaking, okay, I'll be back. Okay, I have, okay, wow, wow, okay, yes. Yes, I can see. So now it shows that we, we have like a common ground as regards conflict. So let's just give, I want to give us like a bit from meaning of what conflict is all about. And um, the first step, definition is um, to come into coalition or disagreement. Be, and that's what it is, conflict. You are either in, you're in disagreement of what the person has said, or you're not really viewing that opinion from that perspective that the person has shared it. There's a clash of interest, there's a clash in um, views to fight, to contend, to battle. That's what conflict is. We struggle, a prolonged struggle and strife. Conflict is just like, this is just giving us a meaning of it. Controversy, there's quarrel, there's conflict between parties, there's discord of actions of feelings. Like, this is what it is, having conflict. I don't know if um, yes, you can share my slide now so I can go just follow through the slide. Okay, okay, while I'm still waiting, let me just keep seeing it there. Now, what, when we are trying to talk about conflict resolution, there are things that we should take into, we should know that it doesn't work. When you are yelling, yelling the problem, refusing to change or compromise, it doesn't work when it comes to conflict resolution. When you are trying to make amends, it doesn't work. Refusing to work out the conflicts, naming, calling, eating, is as if we are not even trying to solve that problem. And if you really look back at the times you've had conflict of interest and we never really reached a conclusion, it could be that we exhibited some of these things I mentioned, that we are refusing to change or compromise. It could be that we are, um, we are just not trying to see from that person's point of view. Now, what works when it comes to conflict resolution? Negotiation works so well. I remember Lucy mentioned something about reorientating people during um, the climate actions. Really, when we want to change people's idea, when we want to change people's perspective, knowing fully well that people are coming from a different background, different ideologies, different school of thoughts. One thing we need to do is this. We should be ready to make negotiations. We should be so ready. Okay, fine. Thank you so much. I'm in slide three right now. Okay, yes, I'm, yeah, I'm in slide four. Thank you so much. So what doesn't work? Yes, so we should be ready to really come into that negotiation table. We should be able to negotiate me mediation. We should be able to mediate because one thing about solving conflict first, I'm see from Vanessa's session about the peace building as well. We should be able to mediate between both parties. We should be ready to do that if we really don't want conflict to take long before it's being resolved. And looking at both parties, we should also have a win-win approach. One of, one of, that's one of the steps in, in ensuring conflict resolution is, is, is achieved, is having it from a win-win approach, not from a win-lose approach or from a fight or a flight approach. So we'll go there the next slide. Thank you so much for sharing the next slide, please. Okay, so when we are able to resolve internal and interpersonal conflicts using a win-win problem solving, like I said, so it's, my voice is cracking. Oh, sorry, can we all hear me again? Okay, 
could be my next work. Yes, yes. So whenever we are having okay, whenever we are having a conflict, we should be able to come from the win-win approach. So as we'll be training people, as we'll be trying to let people know about climate actions, climate education, we should be ready to come from that win-win approach. We should be ready because we should we should be ready for to to negotiate. We should be ready to make people see from people's point of view and then come to a conclusion, not not ignoring their own views, ignoring their own reason of doing things, but coming to a conclusion around it. So when it comes to conflict resolution, I think it's not, um, what, I, what I love about conflict resolution is that it's not something you have to look at in the book. It's an out of the box exercise. So what, what it means basically is that you can't find you, you could have a guide from books from resources, but that cannot be that might not be tailored to solving that particular conflict or particular problem that you're facing. So you have to be ready to think out of the box and out of the box and being flexible at the same time. Now, what is our responsibility? Our responsibility is to find a way to resolve the problem, even if it's if we are not even the cost of it. And I love what we are doing in protect the planet. We are not really the cause of this um, climate um, issues that we are that is facing the world. We may not have contributed majorly, to it, but we are coming together and saying we need to take our own part in making sure that this is done well. We need to start reorientating people. We need to start talking to people about the use of plastic waste. So we shouldn't even think that we are the cause of the problem, but we should be ready to come down to solve the problem. So the next slide, thank you so much. Yeah, the next slide. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Bukola. Okay, yeah. So search for a win-win solution. I keep mentioning the win-win solution because that's, that's like one of the very good ways to solve conflicts. So we should, we should understand that there are different types of um, solutions and the fight solution. And the fight solution is more of you thinking that I'm the one that is right. I really do not care about what you're saying and that can be that's going to be to a fight and a flight is when you are taken from the person's side and you're not taking from your side then you, you have not the, the solution the problem has not been solved because we haven't come together and then another is shutting down when we are not like you're just shutting it down you're not doing anything again but really the best way to go about conflict resolution is for us to identify each other needs and goals. The next slide. Thank you. Sorry for the stress, really. Now, once we want to do that, we have to, one of the steps for us to go about con conflict resolution is this. We need to include the people that are concerned. So now I, I will go back to one of our examples during the breakout session. One of the examples I think my group, Sandra, mentioned was people coming together, the, the, the stakeholders coming together to come to a conclusion, to reason out things, to figure out how to go about it. That's one thing we need to do. Because if you're not bringing in the people that are concerned, then the problem is not going to be solved. So. That's one. Also, we need to give a description of the problem. That is, so we need to describe what the problem is. Because really, we might say the problem is um the problem is um with um, water pollution or probably plastic. Okay, let me use the example of somebody that was from Open State that talks about the um, waste disposal and how they are not disposing waste well. But really, when we want to really solve such problem, that's like the surface problem we are seeing, we need to dig to know the root problem because once we know the root cause of the problem, then all of those things that we are seeing that in, 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 um, in people disposing waste anyhow, not managing the waste, burning of all of these things will be stopped. So we need to really give the problem. We need to describe it and identify the problem. And also we need to explain how conflict resolution can handle all of these wins. So we need to know that because when we have even defined, we need to now make them see. We need to explain because one of the reasons I'm diverting now, one of the reasons why we have conflicts is because there is no knowledge about such things. Because if I know that this thing is not good, 
and I'm well knowledgeable about it. Obviously, I'm not going to do that, and there won't be conflict, really. So we need to do that. Agree not to sleep back. Okay, now, so I think we'll just read those letters so that I don't waste our, um, our time. Now, also, one of the things we need to identify when we are trying to come about um, conflict resolution is to use the high message to explain our concern. Sometimes we might just want to generalize. It shouldn't be, gen we should, we shouldn't be social generalizing. Why? Because... When you're generalizing and the person you're trying to speak with doesn't come up. I love what um, the guy in um, some water said. I might not remember your name. He said, in my own community, he has observed. So when we are talking about complex resolution, one way to really communicate effectively is when we use the I message and also use reflective listening to hear and acknowledge the other's needs and basic goals. We should, we should not look at it from, from the from the fairy fairy, we should be reflective about it. Put ourselves in there. Should try to reason the way they are reasoning. Try to view from their own lens as well. That's going to also help as well. Evaluate exactly what each of our actual needs are within the problems, and that's the best way to go about conflict resolution. We need to know our needs. What is our needs? What do we want? What, okay, what is it? Because when we don't know the needs, about when we don't know the needs, then we'll just be scratching. I will not eat the real problem. And then we should not accept sudden promises not to cause the problem. So we should not accept sudden promises. When there's a promise and there is no action, then really we have already solved the conflict. Next slide, please. Thank you so much. Yes, now I want this is now more of a brainstorming session for us to reflect about our we really love our views about it. Now we have this exercise and it's a cake cake cutting exercise. And the first exercise is you are in charge of a birthday party for four children. You have cake and you need to cut it in four equal parts. We want to brainstorm with now we have to brainstorm together. We might not be brainstorming together because you are not in the same group. But you could just have that brainstorming session on your own and just give us your report or your view on the, on the comment section. Now, brainstorm with your partner how many different ways you could cut that cake. That's number one. Now, this cash sharing solution, it might not really, I don't know if we are married yet, but let's just imagine that we have a friend, it might not be our spouse. So you and your friend or your spouse, whatever it might sound, have one car. You need to go to a meeting tonight and your spouse, your friend wants to visit another friend. How many solutions can you come up with? Now, so we want to, what, what, why, why I'm asking this question is for us to actually be able to bring about different solutions and also view things from another person's perspective. So I'll just, I would, I would be looking at the chat to see how this is really going. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for your comments. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adibaya. So I, I really want us to really have that session. We could just be dropping into that. <clears throat> I really do not um, eat into my time because I'm quite conscious of it. So can, can, can we move to the next slide? But I'm actually looking out for uh, reviews about it. Okay, so now to brainstorm to working out, we should think about we want to think about possible ways to solve the problem so that everyone needs to be met. I really wish this was a physical meeting so everybody could just brainstorm it together. But nevertheless, I think the message <clears throat> is passed. Also, we should not criticize any suggestion, feedback with reflective listening. So the essence of that question I asked was for us to be able to tailor out people's views. So you could hear people say, okay, this cake could be cut from this side. This cake could be cut from probably vertically or horizontally. And some people might say, no, 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 we are, we are not cutting it this way. Let's cut it like a rectangle. People will come up with different views about it. People will come up with different solutions. It is not for us to say, okay, you know, trash out people's opinion. The essence of it is to come to a conclusion, to come to a midpoint, to say, okay, we have followed both parties' views and idea about things. The next solution, please. The next slide, sorry, I said solution. Sorry for that. The next slide, thank you so much. Okay, now, then from there, once we have come about different tabling of it, we should ask really to work. Yes, does it meet 
does it meet all the needs of both parties which are mentioned? Are there, are there any problems likely? Then we should ask, then we should use reflective listening and message and the high message as well. So this is just basically for us to view in people's opinions, people's idea, and then we come to a conclusion as well. So this is just like an extension of what I was saying initially. The next slide, thank you so much for doing this with me. Now, we would find a solution when it comes to conflict resolution using the cake and the cup um, example. We should find a solution that is mutually acceptable to both parties. If agreement seems difficult, then we should summarize areas of agreement. We should restate needs and look for new solutions. That was why I said I love conflict resolution probably because it's one of these things is skills that you need to learn because it's not, it's not something you're going to read from the book you could have an idea of about how to go about it but when you get to the field when you get to getting things done then you have to come up with different opinions so it can't be it can't be one way it can't be it can't be just one direction or when it comes to it it has to be you have to be very very flexible with the way you are coming about when the way you want to make that conflict resolution you need to listen that's why listening is one and when you are listening even though you listen you should be able to use the reflective listening skills to really listen in to know what it is and then come to a mutual conclusion a midpoint that both needs both parties are heard the next slide as well <clears throat> thank you so much for helping me with the slides yeah, so it seems this is just okay. Then from, from these solutions, these conclusions we are reaching, now we need to get an agreement on what, what we need to do. We need to write it down. We need to check all these agreements. You know, once if we don't do this, some people might come and say, No, I never said this. Some people might say, No, it wasn't me. So we need to write it down. Be team. We, must, we need to write those agreements. We need to just write them down for people to see and people should now see, okay, this is it because we won't want to have a case whereby we have come out the whole solutions and somebody is saying, no, I never said this. But once it's written down, the, 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 it's binding already. The next slide. Yeah, follow up evaluation. So we should carry out the agreement so, because that's the, that's the essence of coming together and um, trying to have um, in, as, uh, try coming together to have the same interest, to have the same flow, to come into a conclusion. Once we have agreed on what needs to be done, then we need to carry it as, as well. And if, they are, if what we have agreed on solution doesn't work again, we need to just remember that it's the solution that are filled, not the person, and we should just seek for a new solution. And then we should have some time to time for, to check whether the solution is also working again, because we need to repeat the process of getting to that solution yet again, and then we need to try it out as well. So the next slide. Remember to use the I message and reflective listening. Yeah, the next slide. Thank you so much. I'm seeing the comments in the chat section. Please keep it coming. You're making me feel like, okay, I'm not the only one. Thank you so much. Now, the result of our win-win solution, we are trying to reflect on, okay, if we have come about, if we have deliberated together, involving both stakeholders, Involving both parties. Um, there will be, there will be, we'll have come, everybody took the rest what we are looking for, seeking to achieve work. So it's not just one person that came up with the solution, it is a mutual thing. And then everybody will feel like their opinions, their views has been, res has been respected. Communication, okay, can we just keep this map also? This is just talking about the fact that we need to take up. The I method. Hi. Thank you so much. The next slide. Now, rules of the world. I will just be fast with this. <clears throat> Sorry, rules on the road. So when we are trying to go about conflict resolution, when we are trying to really ensure that 
we come to a conclusion to an agreement in terms of what we are trying to solve, we should be conscious of the choice of what we use. We shouldn't be we shouldn't use use statements because when we use use statements, it's as if we are we are accusing the person. So we should we should be very careful with our use of the words and we shouldn't use the you word. Next slide. And if we really want to think about the conflicts, when we when the first question I asked you know when we say the you word is like see we are just we are we are trying to push the whole problem of the whole um the whole negative consequences on that particular person now we need to slow down remember to slow down when we are talking when it comes to conflict we shouldn't be a c in terms of the way we talk in terms of the way we do things we should just go it we should just be slow because when we look at the tempo of conflict it's always not through a very fast everybody is is always a session where everybody wants to make their voice heard wants to be known so it's always a very active it's always a very crowded uh, let me use the word crowded with me but we need to be slow with what we be doing in terms of conflict resolution we should be everybody is always if everybody will be calm during that session for conflict resolution, we should be the one to be calm, to be slow with it. The next slide. <clears throat> okay, now, sometimes when the tempers are flaring and um, we know that some people, might, in terms of the way they are controlling, in terms of the way they are communicating, once we notice that this temper cannot be calmed down, we should just detox. You should just try as much as you can to just step back, use the high statement to solve the problem. And we should be ready to exist as well, because sometimes there's some conflict that we just, we might not be able to solve at that point of the time. When So when we are talking about climate, climate actions, you are trying to talk to somebody about climate action, and the person is saying, no, no, the person is really negative, not, this, not really agreeing to your views, not saying things, from your perspective, we can't force them because they need to accept. Because once they don't accept or hold it, then there won't be a change. So we need to learn to detour. You need to learn to ex exist that so that 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 um, that conversation. Find a way to just let it go, so that the, which is, it could be as a reason of the way the message was being passed. So you should be able to learn to quickly exist from it because we don't want to trigger any conflict. And then come down again and see how you could introduce that discussion yet again. The next slide. <clears throat> <clears throat> yes, so the construction zone, we want to talk about the high waste statement. So we should use the word high, we should state how we also feel, and we should state the specific behavior that you do not like. So because these are, these, these are ways to go about the conflicts. These are ways to resolve the conflicts, rather. And you should state your willingness to completely resolve the problem. So once you're talking to people about climate action, you tell them from your own point of view, hi, this is what I feel. This is what I'm seeing. This is what statistics is saying. This is how it is going. And then you should be able to say, okay, well, I don't understand what you are coming up from, from your own perspective. But you should be able to calmly Completely resolve that problem. And then we should match ahead also. We should match ahead. We should match ahead. The next slide. Yeah, end of construction. So we should we should see that after reaching a solution, from the mention ahead is for us to come up with different ideas, really. When you mentioned ahead, you are trying to hear the from that person's perspective, the person cannot be close-minded not to really want to do something that to do something that will be harmful for them if they actually need to do it, it's going to be harmful. So ensuring practices that they know is going to be harmful. But by the time you are mentioning are talking about it, they didn't just check okay, what is the solution? Because really, I think from the discussion, the one of the breakout sessions, what somebody said they, I can't remember the person that said it that they need to be involved with the solution process. You can't just bring a solution out of the box and jump it at their feet. They should be ready. So this is the process to get about this conflict in of interest. We, we should be able to come together and say, okay, this is, what is your own solution? Okay, this is my own solution. Let's look at it and come to a conclusion and end all of these things. 
that's um, I've, I've talked about the end of construction as well. The next slide, please. Thank you. So, like this is the end of my presentation. I really want to appreciate Ambassador Samuel and um, Dr. Ash and Dr. Norman and my wonderful lady. I, I think she's a lady that was helping me share the slide. For the, this, this training is just to really take us through how to resolve conflicts. And I know from the conflict of interest is going to be more of our climate actions when we are going to the field, when we want to educate people about some of these practices, knowing fully well that what they've been doing is things that they've been doing since ages. They've, some of them have been packed down, those practices. So it's not going to be a very easy task for us to just suddenly change those behavior. But with such as well and following the process of this conflict resolution and some other um, things that the amazing lineup of facilitators will be sharing with us, I hope we'll be able to convince people to really do the right thing and ensure that our planet is protected. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you can, uh, share, you can you. share the slide with participants. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Bukola, for that awesome section of time. And I know some of us have questions, so please let's just write it down. We have um, a, a here and a and section in that regard. So our next um, speaker is already around, and um, he's someone that has really been of um, a help. He's a brother, he's a friend. I've followed his work so many times. I love what he does and what he's doing at the moment. He's, um, he's not a Nigerian, he's an African. <laughs> and um, he goes by the name Levi Nirienda. Okay, Levi Nirienda is a regional focal point for East and Southern Africa in humanitarian affairs working, humanitarian affairs working group of the United Nations Major Group for Children and Youth, UNMGCY. He's a former intern at International Model United Nations and National Institute for Scientific and Industrial Research. So everybody, let's welcome our own friend and brother, Levi. Levi, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, brother Samuel. And thank you very much, everyone, for one opportunity and for allowing me to come here to come and learn. In fact, here yeah, I'm learning <laughs> a lot has been happening. What a power presentation from Bukola. That that was great. I've learned a lot of things, things that I didn't know here. Yeah, such an opportunity. That's great. I'm very much happy. And uh, thank you very much, Dr. Ash, uh, Risha, and everyone in this place. I know there are a lot of people, great people indeed. Then I, also me, I would love to share my slide. Uh, yes, I would love to share my slide if possible, Trisha. We can share. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, 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 thanks very much. Yes. Okay, as, as we are getting ready, uh, I was supposed to do this also with my colleague from Uganda, who is tied up. Uh, we're supposed to present this together. We're supposed to do so, this. Drisha, please, can, can you enable um, Levi share his, um, share his screen? Yeah, so she's tied up, but uh, we'll, do, we'll do something, we'll be able to present and... Okay. Are you sure you're there? Yes, no, yes, uh, I know. It is. Maybe yeah. can you try? Yes, yes. Yeah. You were able to see something? Yes, Levy. Thank you. Oh, yes, yes. That's yes. great. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Yes, let me just uh, do it like this. So, uh, um, that's my name there. You can see my name is there. So I uh, would love to talk about, uh, since we're <laughs> the two of us, but I'm presenting from here. I know we are going to learn something from here. 
So this is just about climate education and, uh, and sustainability. So I know we understand what climate is. We talk about, we talk of the weather patterns, maybe that uh, at a certain area or might be within a region or within a place for a long period of time. So uh, I would love to talk much about sustainability because it's something that we can control and something that we can do right now. And it is very much important for us to be sustainable leaders, sustainable followers, sustainable children. We have to value sustainability for us to achieve these goals, for us to protect our planet, for us to, 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 to prevent issues of climate change. So that's what I, I would love to focus much uh, during uh, today's session as we are learning about sustainability. So uh, that's just the definition there which I've put uh, for sustainable for sustainability. So it talks, it says it's a modern meaning that this is what is happening right now. So it's not something indigenous, but uh, it used to be there. I know we are going to understand as we continue. So you can get the definition. I've just uh, put the, the whole definition there so that someone may just understand from it. The saying is a modern concept to promote thinking around ways of living in harmony with natural world while working actively to protect and preserve preserve it from irreversible damage. So uh, from this definition, you understand that uh, the way we live, the way we live with nature, with our understanding, what do we do? Even as we continue working, as we continue, uh, we have to make sure that we put it into our minds, we preserve it, we protect it. Because uh, right now we are talking of uh, ecosystem restoration. I know restoration is more like the healing process of which it's not easy to restore back the ecosystem. But if we are going to protect it, that is possible. And we are working on protecting our planet. So even the definition, it says, even as we actively work, we have to make sure that we consider protecting and also preserving our, our, our planet. Then this sustainability, it seeks, to it seeks to balance the advancement of human well-being with the conservation of our nature. Our, our, our natural resource or our nature. So uh, what it means here is we continue working. It's not that we're going to sit back because we may, because of fear, maybe we may fear to say that we're going to destroy our environment. As we are working, we have to go to put that into consideration. So in short, uh, sustainability is uh, doing things that will not compromise with the future generation, even them as they are going to seek solution. So this is as we are, if we become sustainable leaders, then it means we'll be people, we'll be a very good people who are going to protect our planet. So uh, this is just a very simple flowchart. And this uh, flowchart is, uh, uh, is, it talks about the background of sustainability. So sustainability during the time, during um, the industrial revolution, when industrial revolution came, everyone was, uh, was busy, uh, uh, thinking of uh, how to create wealth, economic growth, and that was the many purpose. And everyone was there to make sure that uh, they, they they see how they can bring, how they can create wealth. And now this brought back a sage on economic growth, and also it increased the the the, the, the resource exploitation and 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 even waste uh, production. So waste were being produced, and also even resources could be. Uh, exploited could be destroyed. So during this time, during industrial revolution, uh, people were not where the environment was treated as an infinite, uh, as an infinite resource. So it could be plundered without, uh, without any concern. People could just use it. People could just do whatever the environment, as long as they are producing wealth from it. So now things changed in 1962, uh, following the stimulus effect of uh, Rachel's uh, Nature's Carson, Carson's book uh, titled uh, Silent, Silent Spleen. So this book, when it came, it, uh, it called an, an attention to, to an idea of environmental conservation. That's when now things started to change. And this, the same book, because of it now, uh, development and also protection of uh, nat natural resources uh, where uh, the research was being done which led to which led to 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 UN uh, world uh, world commission environment on environment and development report which which which, which was given in uh, 1987 
and this was called a uh, bland blended land with uh, that that was just the name that which was given to this report so it was also a concern on the uh, environmental issues and also with what uh what, what is being done because that's when now the discussions started uh started when now people started to, to talk about the environmental issues and now it was called our common future which which had a great impact on communicating communicating the needs for sustainable development then also this one it led to the rio Earth summit which was the first ever developmental and environmental summit uh, which led to the UN uh, formation of the major groups like the United Nations Major Group for Children and Youth, United Nations Major Group for Women. So the major groups were formed during this time to increase uh, participation, to increase uh, inclusion, that how can all these people take part in, the, in these discussions? So then, uh, then up to now, the, even the coming of uh, the Millennium Development goals and also the sustainable development goals so this is where we are now we are the, the we are we are we are working with the sustainable development goals that's from from 2015 up to 2030 for vision 2030 so now uh so this is uh about the sustainable development goals you also understand i want us to talk about this the three keys uh, the the key the key words for for the sustainable development goals we, we all understand the 17th goal the 17 they, they, they are all 17 the goals in num the total number so as we are talking about the climate we talk about goal number 13 and also so these are the key words when we talk about the sustainable development goals which are the current goals the ones we are working the, the the stage we are at right now uh with the sustainable with the with the with sustainability so there is prosperity which talks about economic development so that's the focus also then it also talks about uh people which is social inclusion that everyone has to be included it's not about those maybe people at that level but also we look at uh women maybe gender every every race uh, any 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 region, any party, make sure that there are representatives there. Then also, when we talk about the planet, we are talking about environmental environmental sustainability. So all these things, when we put them together, then now if we consider all these things, we are going to see that we are talking about sustainability because sustainability it promotes economic development, it promotes people's inclusion, it also promotes uh, environmental sustainability. Why you have to uh, put in mind whatever that you are doing it won't compromise with the future generation it won't compromise with uh the next generation as they seek for the for 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 help as they they, they will be able to do their own things even that time what we are going to do it is not going to impact those people so when we talk about sustainability we have to consider all these things we have to consider all these words we make sure that uh they are this is how one can be as sustainable so now how can this be a reality uh as everyone as we are here for the for this we may just talk with maybe just a story where somebody is talking about sustainability talk about what so uh we have to practice all these things for this to become a reality for us to achieve this goal of sustainability so we uh resource and energy conservation people if we start uh practicing this, then we are going to be a sustainable world. Then it means sustainability, it will, it will be achieved. That will be our lifestyle. It has to become part of your life. You have to be willing to do it. Then also protect protection of biodiversity. You find that maybe we just, uh, if I talk about maybe insects, there are certain uh, things that have been created maybe they are they have no protection it's our duty to protect that it's our duty to protect uh our environment it's our duty to protect our forest it's our duty to protect our wildlife that's our duty if we're going to be such people then we're going to achieve this goal then also if we talk about recycling of waste recycling of waste it might be uh last week i was presenting my my project we are being a food and nutritionist we are we are doing a project on uh, uh production of bioethanol where we used waste fruits and waste shima it might not be that recycling that we may think of uh 
recycling a plastic or doing or reversing something to use the, the, that thing. But it may be something simple, maybe even at household level, just to reduce the amount of waste to, 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 to just to, you may, you may turn something into something useful where you begin to reuse the same things. Uh, when you talk about uh, secular economy, secular economy, they say, what if the resources, the products that we have today, they become the resources of tomorrow. So if we have that mentality, whatever that we have today, what, that, what we use today, we're going to reuse them, they become the resources of what we are going to use tomorrow. Then it means this, it will help us to have, uh, to do a lot of things. Then also uh, advocating equal opportunities for all. I know this is not easy for us maybe, but uh, as UNMGSY, this is our duty. We do advocate for young people because we stand, we make sure that everyone, their voices, their head, and also we, we for equal opportunities. Because if this is missing also, it means we are missing the ability and capabilities of people that are being left out. Sometimes we may say that one may not do anything, but as long as we are leaving those people, maybe we, it means we are also leaving solution. Imagine if maybe we say we don't, we are not going to include women in this uh, particular program. We might not know that the solution of a certain area or maybe certain things for, for that to be achieved, it will need a woman with that understanding to give us that, uh, to explain certain things that a man cannot understand. So same applies to the youth. Maybe we may say these young people, they are not doing anything. These young people, they are uh, they are just they are just they are noise makers. We might not know that they are the ones who are having a solution. They are the ones who may help us even to leave things when we don't have uh, when where we can't do that thing. So it means if everyone is included, then we are going to be that's a sustainable world where things are moving in a way where uh, the way it may be needed. Then adopting environmental friend lifestyle. If everyone will be like that, we are going to protect our planet. If we start practicing this, the story of climate change, global warming, that will be the story of the past. If everyone adopts this uh, uh, environmental friendly lifestyle. So uh, what's the future sustainability? So I was talking about how we can do it. So uh, the future sustainability, this may be personal, the way you may view it, the, may you, the way you may see it also uh, as you as an individual. And also, but I've just written it in general where uh, I, I was just explaining to say, it will be important to develop systems and technologies that can help minimize our environmental footprint, footprint and maximize equalities around the world. So uh, we can't run away from technology. We are living in the world of technology right now. Uh, technology has gone, it's being advanced every day. So even as we are developing technology, I, I, would, uh, I would suggest that it's better we develop a system, we develop technologies that can help minimize the environmental footprint, not to increase or to worsen the situation. Because if every technology is being allowed, uh, maybe we don't pay attention to it, then it means we are going to destroy our own, uh, our own planet. So to protect, it's not always to work where you just follow or you just uh, hear whatever that is being said. You have to be vigilant also, because if everyone will be vigilant with whatever that is happening, like in my country, uh, environmental issues are not, uh, are not, they are not many concerned. People, they don't pay much attention to the environmental issues. I've, uh, I've worked with environmental students and environmental young graduates. You find that the story is something else. But we try to push to see maybe in the future, because I've seen in other countries we have uh, ministers of environmental and what here we don't have that. And uh, I've, I've seen even, even in Nigeria, uh, high excellence there, that's, that's great. I was just looking at the picture, I said, that, wow, things are happening. So you find that certain things are missing. When you have such problems, you have nowhere to go to, but it's our duty to continue speaking, to rise, and also to fight against every technology that may spoil and destroy our planet. As they have said, to say there's no uh, planet B, it's only this one that we have. Then, um, thank you very much. That's all what I have for you. Thank you. Wow, wow. 
Thank you very much, Levi. Wow, that's really awesome. That's really awesome. And then I also know we, some persons here also has um, questions. So please, I will employ us to just hold on for the, for the last presentation while they ask their questions, if any, and if not, we'll just call today day. So thank you very much, Levi, for that awesome. I, I really, I've, I've learned a whole lot today. Like you said, today is a learning day. <laughs> Live in any day. Okay, so the next person on our present that will be taking us for today is um, somebody I respect so much. Like I was saying before, probably he didn't, he was out when I was saying that his organization has one of those organizations I really admire to join as at um, 2019. Okay, so I often follow them on Facebook here in Nigeria. I wanted, I was looking for a climate based organization here in Nigeria to join not just a climate-based organization, but an organization that has um, an impact here in Nigeria. So the organization was one of the organizations that I really desired. In fact, to a point, whenever they are posting stuff on Facebook, I'll go to their comment section <laughs> and be commenting to ask, how do I join you people? And today we are privileged to have the co-founder of that organization here. So I'll just read his profile to us. All we do is an a genetic, is an energetic, as strategic leader who balances a practical view of competing for development interests with a passion for environmental protection and conservation. His knowledge of environmental issues is broad and multifaceted. What makes him stand out among his peers is his ability to effectively engage and interest a great cross-section of individuals in environmental issues by building solid relationships, writing articles, contributing to work working groups, and then leveraging social media platforms. A resolutely self-driven professional with nine years progressive experience in project management, business development, sales and marketing, campaign specialist, social media strategy, environmental sustainability, climate change, digital marketing, and facilitation. He enjoys working at the intersection of corporate sectors, media development, technology, and entertainment. Experience in working and managing teams with diverse multicultural natural backgrounds. Given his dedication to development, he has been instrumental in development of other business, other businesses, sectors, companies, social change initiatives, serving as a volunteer mentor and strategist. He is the co-founder of International Climate Change Development Initiative, ICCDI Africa. Youth Focal Point Nigeria, UNDP Small Grant Program, Youth Lead Auto, Youth Lead Auto Global Environmental Outlook, GO6, and Communication Director for Africa Youth Initiative on Climate Change. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Olumide Idowu, co-founder of the International Climate Change Development Initiative, SCCDI Africa. So Mr. Olumide, wow. Yeah, before. Wow, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you for those long profiles, Samuel. I'm very happy to, to be here today. I'm sure that you all can listen and hear me, right? Yes, yes, yes. A lot of clear. So uh, I don't have a, I don't have a presentation to give, but I have my write-up here to share with you guys. So Bear with me on that, and uh, a lot of calls coming on my on my phone. Uh, let, let me let me quickly do this. so. Uh, once again, thank you very much, Samuel, and thanks for being part of our organization, and thanks for all the contribution and for you to be able to put this together. Is something that speaks to progress, and it's something that I want to also uh, encourage that we should continue to do as young people. Is also even related to. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about, because what you are doing now is you are creating a space for other young people, activists, and youth across the board to actually understand the importance of uh, uh, and how to teach climate change. Because that's one of the key conversations that has been going on now, that a lot of young people actually want to know about climate change, but they don't know how to get that learning or what and what that need to take place for them to, you know, be part of it. So I will start by saying that uh, it's very it's a good honor to have all the people. And I was also part of, uh, I listened to the essay to the special, uh, to the minister, 
uh, Minister for States, which I, I appreciate a lot, Madam Priscilla Achafa. That was a very good presentation as well. So one of the essential principles of teaching climate change to students, to youth, to people, and to everybody is a message that it has consequences for the earth and human life. Why do I say so? Because every one of us have, as young people, every one of us as youth actually look forward to actually understand what climate change is all about. And you know, for you to understand how to teach climate change, you also need to understand what climate change is all about as an individual, so that you'll be able to transfer knowledge or able to you know, inject that experience or the, the knowledge you have passed through into the upcoming generation. So most of the time, all of us just have the experience, just have the knowledge, but we don't know how to teach and inject that knowledge or transfer that knowledge to people. And so many students who want to take an active role in combating climate change and are interested in how they can do so in the class need to also to have that interest of learning, interest of asking questions, interest of understanding the process and what climate change is actually all about. And that is also very, very key. And so most of educators uh, have the opportunity to embed elements of climate change into their lessons. But what is happening presently across, let me, let me use Nigeria as an example. What's happening presently with our curriculum in Nigeria is that we are not seeing climate change as a conversation. And, and to ensure the students have the knowledge, they need to address the issue in the capacity. Even when the curriculum is not helping us, then definitely there's no how the teaching and the transfer knowledge. We also have that understanding of you being able to get what you want to learn when it comes to the issue of climate change. In Nigeria, uh, uh, particularly, climate change is, is a time bomb. And when we see it as a time bomb that is affecting both the children, the youth, affecting the elderly ones, the vulnerable, even the, the people that are with disability, you can understand that if we don't start teaching them now, then we'll not be able to understand how they can see the impact of the problem. So I have this key point on how you can start to teach people on climate change. First, we as educators, we as uh, uh, experts, we as teachers, we need to start creating what we call a lab. A lab, when I say a lab, I'm talking about a forum, a gathering, even if it's going to be like curriculum activities in schools, so that we can use that platform to split and to break down the issue of climate change. Let me tell you that when you want to tell people about climate change, you don't start using the word climate change. You need to explain it in a way whereby they will understand it. And you remember, teaching also comes with culture. Teaching also comes with languages. So it depends on the kind of audience you are talking to before you can now start saying that you want to transfer or you want to teach. So developing a lab or doing a lab that we target the kind of audience you want to talk to, we help you to teach effectively and transfer that knowledge. Secondly, you know, uh, uh, a lot of us go to a cinema to watch movies. A lot of us watch movies on our laptop. It is also very important as teachers, as educators, to start using instruments like movies. There are a lot of uh, uh, stories, there are a lot of movies out there that can teach you how to understand, can teach you how to train people on climate change. So using movie to explain and to let them understand the importance or the impact in a local way is also very, very important. So movie is one of the key ways that we can do used to teach and climate change. Next one, everybody love reading. And I can say that if we don't read, I don't know how you want to grow. So as you are planning to teach or to transfer knowledge to young people or to children or to anybody, you need to inculcate that habit of reading. We need to read books, books that speaks to our, you know, our local entity, books that speaks to that impact we are seeing because climate change is broad. So it depends on the kind of way you want to go into. So 
reading is one of the key ways. So there are a lot of books you can read. There are a lot of materials you can download for your teaching, uh, the way you can uh, to teach them in, uh, in classes or in a garden, or you bring them together for a forum. Because with that, with your reading, learning, and understanding what you read, you'll be able to transfer knowledge and make people to understand. And then, then we also need to, there's what we call a garden, you know? You need to use a garden as an example for teaching on climate change. Because you need, uh, uh, most of us, uh, I have a friend, a colleague organization that are teaching young people on uh, how to develop a garden in their community, in their school. is one of the ways of teaching them the impacts and the diverse way of what climate change is also all about. So you can take a children, you can tell them to come up with an idea or take them on a way whereby you can develop a garden system in teaching them on different diverse ways of climate. Because uh, the word climate change is what we say the climate is changing. But what are the components? What are the impacts? What are the ideas that fall along? When we talk about the global warming, a lot of people are talking about the agriculture sector. People are talking about the energy sector. There are a lot of things that are embedded in climate change, which we need to also transfer and transit into the, their knowledge to understand what they want to talk. So we need to talk about, and, and this is very, very key to me, because if you don't use this, there's no other people will understand what you're saying. So I'm saying that the next thing is, is very important as well to use our personal experience, our personal story, to share ideas of what we have been going through, how climate change is it to us, how we're able to even start this journey. Because teaching people with your own local experience, your own uh, uh, community experience, we also help them to start looking at the figure, uh, the, 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 the image of what climate change is in their own local community. Whenever country you are, just try to use your experience to teach people the impact of what you face when you're trying to understand the issue of climate change. And to end uh, my, my short uh, presentation, because there are a lot of things that we need to talk about when it comes to teaching climate change. A lot of us also need to know that image, infographs, storytelling are one of the key ways of sharing experience. If you can use those three things, a lot of children and uh, when you notice that for, for us that pass through prim, uh, uh, kindergarten or nursery, that we start doing A for apple, B for board. There's a way we can also create infographs on the impact on what climate change is all about, definitions, understanding where it comes from, history. We can use infographs to do that. We now transfer that by using the storytelling, looking at experience or looking at impact or issues that happens in different communities to now tell them. If you're talking, I'm talking from experience of Nigeria now, looking at uh, the six geopolitical zones, you can tell them the impact of climate change in the Northern region when we talk about this, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the desertification of uh, uh, you know, uh, forest. When you talk about uh, the oil spillage in the South South, then you look at the Southwest, when you look at the critical part of sea level rise and flooding, you can start using that one to explain to them that do you know the rain that fell? You know, there's a lot of ex um, uh, story sharing, storytelling that you can share with them that they will be able to understand the impact of, um, of climate change and the story they need to understand on how to teach this climate change to everybody. So uh, guys, my fellow colleagues, my friends, everybody on this show and past speakers, I want to say a big thank you to you for giving me this opportunity to share a little bit an impactful story of how to teach climate change with you all. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much, Sherry. It's really, it's really, an, it's really an honor having you among us. So let's just start fastly before he leaves. I know he, he has a busy outro today. So do any of us have any questions? Let us do that as fast as we can. Any question? Questions, questions, questions. We are done for the day. So this is a Q and A section, question and answer section. So questions, if you have any question, please just indicate by reason of hand. And that was really impactful moments with um, Devi and then um, 
Bukola and um, Olumide for the second section. That was really awesome. Learning about conflict resolution relating to your environment and how to tackle issues, especially as we'll be doing our field work. That was really a key. And also learning about climate and sustainability, taking to them, um, taken by Levy, how they have um, this synonymous relationship and how we as well can foster the development in our own personal environment. And um, here we have um, Mr. Lumi talking about how to teach climate change. Wow, that was really awesome. What's, what really got me was um, the picture info he talked about. It was, it was really awesome. It's, it's, and the storytelling approach too. That's awesome. So we have questions. Any questions? Okay, Faith, you have a question? Faith, okay, Raphael, your question, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the session was very impactful. And uh, my question is going to go like this. I just wanted to be sure and also know how we'll be able to, to like, synergize and how we're able to like create these uh, 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 occasions where other persons can participate in the sense that in course of this project you are coming around and how we be how can we be able to cover every region every area because if we are taking our selected areas how about all that but those who are still living deep into the uh, rural settlements, the remote areas. So that's my question. I just wanted to know if we can also invite some uh, some uh, drive agents or some social change agents who can also come and learn from me and be a partner of this uh, great initiative. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Rafael. Um... Yes, for sure. That's why um, collaboration is key. Okay, to everything, collaboration is key. If I hadn't met Mr. Lumide, if I hadn't met um, the founder of um, Global SC, if I haven't met um, SCM, if I haven't met Action GS, World Merit, PIGD, the Habits, and if I haven't met the, Minister, the Federal Ministry of Environment, won't have, I don't think today would have been a success. So collaboration is key. We need to collaborate with these people, with this organization, with these social um, agents movements, especially at the grassroots level, so that it will give us an easy penetration at the grassroots level. Because without we having them on board, we cannot penetrate easily at the grassroots level. Let me give you an instance. Let's say I want to come to River State, okay? And then I want to go to Ogoni in River State, okay? So, I cannot just enter Ogoni without knowing anybody. I have to make inquiries. I have to put some things in place of who is going to take media, who exactly knows the place, and also know some organizations too who have done a little bit work in those areas so that my work and my movement in those areas becomes smooth and easy. Okay. So um, there was a project I was carrying out. Let me just share a, a, a brief story. There was a project um, I was carrying out in a... Um, in, in um, Cross River State, okay? So before the lockdown, I was like, I will carry out this project. And somebody told me, we're gonna get you arrested. You're not from this state and you cannot do this thing in our state. Go to your state and do whatever you wanna do. You wanna come and give our children um, COVID-19 and we cannot let that happen. <laughs> and my mother was like, well, I don't need to be from your state before I make the change happen. I keep telling myself, I am in Nigeria, okay? And since I'm in Nigeria, I'm from all states. So I don't need to be from a particular state to initiate any change. As long as I'm in Nigeria, I'm from your state. So when I left, when I left them during the lockdown, the project started. I already had people on ground that are from the community, that are from that state. So what I did was I had to use them to run the project. And the project was really awesome. It touched so many lives and then the project was um, initiated by World Merit, which is a um, safe school. So I pioneered safe school across River State Calabar. And we had a whole lot of results. We had a whole lot of testimonies. And even the guy that told me, in fact, the guy is even a politician. He's um, a youth as well. 
but just want to stop us from educating children about climate change and then also educating them about SDGs, educating them about the need for them to be educated regardless of COVID-19 and making them not to be able to go to school. So we are able to do a whole lot of things in that, in that regard and we achieved a whole lot of results. So yes, we need these actors, we need people at the grassroots and if you can get us people at the grassroots, that would be a plus for us as well so that we will have an ease movement in these processes. Thank you very much for the wonderful question. Hope I answered it well. Okay. All right. So do you have, do you have any other question? Uh, no. My, my question, uh, the question that I would still want to ask is uh, based on uh, each participant. Like, uh, would, would there be any form of uh, possible assistance? Because, you know, over here in terms of transportation, Okay, okay. Also, uh, all right, all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. So for, for, for coming to your state for participants, we'll carry everybody along. As long as we have the necessary funds required, we'll carry everybody along. That is just all I have to say in regards to that. So when I say we'll carry everybody along, I believe by our by our ability, as God's grace and everything, inshallah, we'll make everything possible. Okay, so that is all I can say in that regards. All right, who, who, who has asked the question? Okay, so Dr. Ash, please. Is Dr. Ash here? Sam? Yes, please. You Sorry, just... my, my, yeah. Can you, can you hear me? My yes, connection's yes, been you. coming and going. Yes, we can hear you. We are done for the day, so you can just close us for the section, or if, if you don't mind, or sure. Dr. Noma can do it. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Can, can, can you hear? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Well, um, first of all, I just wanted to say that it, it, this has been an extremely insightful session, and I, I just, uh, you know, I want to say that it's covered a range of amazing issues from the importance of you know, just coming together here to be able to, to collectivize, uh, to, to build our resolve to take action, and also uh, to address issues of peace, conflict, uh, you know, experiences, um, the whole issue of sustainability. So it's been a very, very comprehensive session. And I do want to congratulate all of you for doing this. And I do also want to say that, um, you know, each each, every drop fills the ocean. So this has been a very, very important day. One in coming together, two also, um, I was, I am absolutely awestruck as I hear the incredible presentations that we've had. And, um, you know, everyone here has a phenomenal strength in, the, in their voice and also in their own effort and perseverance to address the issue of climate change. And I agree with the, the important messages here. We need to fully understand what the issue of climate change is, you know, what it is we can do in our worlds to affect change. The, the power of storytelling, I completely agree with you, is extraordinary. And um, Bukola also shared uh, an important um, message, which was about conflict resolution. And we must understand that the issue of, um, you know, conflict, security, um, uh, migration as a consequence of climate change is real. And it is one that brings a human face to the issue. And, and therefore sharing these stories is extraordinary because it is about bringing the living and breathing perspective on the issue of climate change together. And I do together with all of us. And I wanna also say that we are starting an initiative which will be about br bringing film uh, to the family and also people who have real life stories to share. And I will encourage you, each one of you and Sam, you know, we'll keep you posted, but hopefully all of you will be able to join the WhatsApp group or I know Sam already has a group, maybe he can add us so that we can continue to share. But it is like, like they say, you know, together we will go far. And I want to just throw light on one thing that if you think back on the moments where history has um, undergone a metamorphosis, where we have experienced transformation, where 
you know, uh, we have been able to change our narrative, uh, whether we think of our struggles, which are freedom struggles, or we think about fighting for, for rights, um, uh, which is, you know, very much We can't hear you anymore, part. Ash. Pardon me? We can you. We, we were not hearing you. Okay. It was a piece of uh, your message that we, we didn't hear. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, yes, we can hear you. Yeah. We, we so I just want to say that you know moments when things have changed and we have we have experienced movements and revolution has when people has been when people come together, and has been when people share their stories, and has been when people uh, are able to exchange, bringing music, dance, art, theater, storytelling. Uh, you know, all of those together to tell real living and breathing, share living and breathing narratives. And, and so, you know, your, so voices do count. And coming together to exchange stories is a very powerful, very, very powerful thing to do. And again, I'm going to say that, you know, we, we are in fact planning uh, film screenings. And I'm going to encourage all of you to join because the film's screenings will not only be just film, but about exchanging messages, understanding the issues, and also meeting people who have been at the forefront of a lot of the change that the films represent. And each one of you, in my mind, represents that change. So it's been a very, very important day. I don't want to take too much more of your time, but I want to say a very big congratulations. And I do want to say we have a long way to go. But this is a first very important step in that direction. And uh, the important thing is now to, uh, to, touch, to touch the field and to touch the lives of communities and be able to uh, help in amplifying the voices of communities. And I know that Drisha has shared a link here to the pop festival, but I wanna say that we have a festival. We deliberately call it a festival because it, about, it is about celebrating youth. It's about celebrating voices. It's about celebrating action. And it's about focusing on hope. And you know, the youth of the world are the hope. So I wanna say that, you know, during that festival, please, uh, we are gonna have a, a day, if not more dedicated only to Africa. And it's very, very important that we are able to use this opportunity to put Nigeria out on a global uh, map as an important model for the world to learn from. And if we can make change, uh, let everybody learn from that experience and, and, and you be the ones to, and we will together be the ones to, to pave the way to that change, that much needed change. And I want to give all of you a big hand, tell you how much I love and I respect all of you for what you're doing. Sam, thank you once again for bringing us all together. And, uh, for each one of you who shared your voices, Vanessa, uh, Bukola, you know, I want to say Sam, Dr. Norma, uh, you know, Brother Levy, uh, you know, and, and each one of you, because everyone has shared so many important things over here, um, you know, during the course of our discussions. And all of you have ideas for what solutions and actions can be implemented in the field to make that difference. So, um, you know, the important thing is now to translate that narrative into real action. So let's get out there and make things happen. Well done to all of you. And I'm really looking forward to uh, every next step. And let's use that, that pop festival as an opportunity for all of you to not only demonstrate the change that you're making, showcase it, amplify it, and let the world watch and learn. So well done and uh, big congratulations okay, once okay. again. Okay, Thank you. Thank you. Um, I I am seeing two hands up. John, Obasi John, you want to say something? Please go. On. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. My Good name afternoon. is Obasi John. I'm okay. representing Lagos State. I want to thank everybody for this opportunity of partaking in this great event. Well. By God's grace, I've learned a lot. So many knowledge have been transferred to me. And I believe that um, in our host community, with what we have learned, after this event, we'll be able to communicate to our host community. Like over here in Lagos, we have been doing so well, but we're going to school, creating 
environmental awareness, but I've been organizing so many, you know, um, exercises. So I want to appreciate the organizers, if you did well, and by God's grace, we'll continue. Thank you so much. I appreciate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. And we have um, him. You may be. You may be pleased. You may unmute yourself. Shidi Mobi. Is she still with us? Okay, so uh, enough percent of that time. I want to thank everybody. Thank you, Dr. Ash, Dr. Noma, and Risha, Koma, Vanessa, Levy. Thank you, Mr. Lomide. Thank you, Mrs. Mbukola. Thank you to all the participants. And then we also look forward to having you tomorrow, which is the last day. And then after tomorrow, you're gonna see the, the dimensional approach of this project is gonna do a whole lot of things in your life. Like after tomorrow, the on-site process of the project is gonna commence. So we are not just in this training because we wanna do it, but this is a preparatory section into the on-site process of the project. And we know during the on-site process of this project, it's going to transform a whole lot of things in your lives. And also it's going to help you as well to be a voice for your society, a voice for your society, for your community, for Africa and the globe at large. And I want to encourage everyone of us to also partake in the pop festival coming up. You should all do well to register in that. It's going to place on a global map as well. So from my own end, since no further question, I'm gonna say thank you and then do have a nice day. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you so much. See you, see you tomorrow. Thank, God bless you Thank all. you so much. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Congratulations. Mm, it's will meet tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, bye. God bless you. Bye. You. Bye. <laughs> Stay safe, everyone. God Bye. bless. Bye. God bless you. God bless you.